take time. We don't worry about the hate. We just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here. And that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some... 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. And breaking news right now out of the House of Representatives in Washington, D.C., history voting for or against the articles of impeachment against President Trump. This is a live look right now on the floor of the House. It has been a fiery day in Congress as representatives took turns speaking to cheers and boos as they made their feelings very well known about one of the most controversial parts of this presidency. And it is a presidency that has oftentimes been shrouded in controversy. NBC's Alice Barr has been watching from Capitol Hill all day and shows us how deeply divided the House is tonight. The weight of history hangs over the U.S. Capitol today as the House holds its final vote on the impeachment of President Trump. Today we are here to defend democracy for the people. One by one, representatives speaking in support or opposition. Today is going to be a lot of things. What it is not is fair. What it is not is about the truth. All with an eye toward the legacy of impeaching an American president for only the third time. Dear Ellie and James. Congressman Joe Kennedy reading a letter telling his no children law. why he's voting yes. He broke our laws. He threatened our security. Democrats hold the majority in the House and nearly everyone supports impeaching the president for abusing his power and obstructing Congress. President Trump watching and fuming, tweeting, can you believe I will be impeached today? In the middle of the House debate, the president leaving Washington for a campaign rally in Michigan. Democrats insisting the case against him is clear. The president committed constitutional crimes. The president's crimes are impeachable while Republicans line up solidly to defend President Trump. I believe this is the most unfair, politically biased, rigged process. A process now being written into history with the Republican-controlled Senate eager to begin the next chapter. And the verbiage is still going on inside the House of Representatives. We are keeping an eye on every moment of it. We'll bring you the very latest as it happens. Stay with us through the course of this process. And now to the massive fire that broke out in DeKalb County. It happened during evening rush hour tonight. 11 Alive's Elvin Lopez live on Flat Shoals Road. She has an update for us right now. Elvin. 
Yeah, when fire officials arrived responding to this house fire around 5.30 p.m., they found that there wasn't only one house on fire, there were two. Now, the good news here is that no one lives inside those homes and no one was injured, but firefighters were still able to extinguish the flames pretty quickly. But I want you to take a look at this video showing how massive the flames were. Now, this is from our 11 Alive Sky Tracker. Spotted these flames when flying over these homes. This is something that you certainly don't want to see in a busy area as it was during a rush hour here on Flat Shoals Road. Now, there is a family dollar right in front of these homes and gas stations here just feet away. Still, no word right now on what caused those massive flames. Fire officials tell me they don't believe that the fire was started by any electrical reason, and investigators are arriving on scene right now to determine what actually happened now at this time fire officials are not ruling out that someone may have been inside one of these homes before the fire started but once they arrived they say that no one was inside those homes jeff all right Owen lopez from flat shoals road thank you a pair of home invasions making headlines tonight in metro atlanta in both cases the suspects were shot by homeowners in brookhaven a homeowner returned home wednesday afternoon found an intruder in the house on Wilmont Drive, the homeowner shot and killed the suspect. Police don't believe anyone else was involved. Georgia law allows us to use force up to and including deadly force to protect our lives, the lives of a third party, or to protect against property. Um, so uh, we are, we'll be looking at those things to find out if there's a self-defense claim involved here. No word on whether charges will be filed against the homeowner. The investigation obviously continues. In Conyers yesterday, a homeowner shot in a home invasion. Police also believe she shot one of the suspects. It happened on uh, an address called Lost Valley Drive. Police say the two men kicked in the door. She ran upstairs to her bedroom. They kicked in that door too. She was shot twice, rushed to the hospital. Suspects got away. There's no word on the motive or if anything was taken during this home invasion. Jackson County is shutting down elementary schools tomorrow, one day ahead of the scheduled holiday break. The district says right now 14% of its students are absent, mostly because of flu or strep, and a lot of the staff is out right now too. Superintendent Dr. April Howard says the district's faculty team will be working diligently to clean and disinfect schools and students and staff uh, so that they can have a healthy start next year in January. Middle and high school students will keep their scheduled last day of class so they can finish their exams. The district says it has seen far fewer cases of the flu in middle and high schools there. Jackson County is one, of course, of the districts that are struggling with an early flu this season. This week, more than 100 students were absent at Crab Apple Lane Elementary School in Fayette County. The principal says dozens have confirmed cases of the flu. Now, the Georgia Department of Health says more than 200 people have been hospitalized for the flu this season. Two have died. As usual, the department says the best way to protect yourself and your kids is to get the flu shot. We have dry weather out there right now and chilly air in place. We have now moved down into the 30s. It is in the upper 30s right now. Thank goodness it is dry out there because uh, we don't need any kind of frozen precip around. In fact, take a look around the entire southeast. We don't have any rain, any moisture that's moving in yet. Once we get toward the weekend, we'll see some of that uh, moisture move our way. And it was a pretty cool afternoon up in New York today. We had a squall, a snow squall that moved through New York. I shared a couple of time lapses on my Facebook page if you want to check that out. Chris Holcomb 11 Alive on Facebook as that uh, those snow squalls came through there and then moved out pretty quickly. Thank goodness nothing like that happening here. We just have plenty of cold air in place. Look at that temperature. We're now, <coughs> excuse me, in the 30s at 39 degrees. It is still in the 40s in Athens, lower 40s in Eatonton. Rome still in the 40s, everybody else so in those 30s. Now, as we go through the rest of the nighttime hours, it is going to be chilly. We have clear skies. We're in the 30s now. We'll be in the mid 30s at midnight. And then by tomorrow morning, lower 30s. And even here between 6 and 8 in the morning, we'll dip down to 29 degrees for our low temperature of the day. That is going to be a chilly start. Stay with us. We'll tell you much more about the uh, the rain that's going to be moving our way and an area of low pressure developing in the Gulf of Mexico and how that's going to impact your weekend. Chris, thank you. A substitute teacher charged with slapping a student with special needs in the face. That tops our speed feed tonight. According to warrants, Charles Black was filling in at Hill Grove High School in Powder Springs earlier this month. And when a nonverbal student wouldn't stop touching a computer, Black allegedly slapped him in the face to get him to stop. The school district says Black is no longer employed with them and they are encouraging people to report safety concerns to the district's tip line. 
A second twin now under arrest for allegedly attacking a woman with a frying pan. Kyra Faison was taken into custody at a motel in College Park. The Clayton County Sheriff says she and her sister Tyra beat the victim in the face with a the pan, then stole her keys and phone. The sheriff says Kyra's boyfriend was also arrested. And the University of South Carolina will soon start selling alcohol at sporting events in 2020. Several schools in the SEC now allow alcohol sales at sporting events. Georgia is not one of them. The dogs will travel to Columbia next season. That game is scheduled for November 7th. Massive homecoming at Hartsfield Jackson this morning. Thousands of troops arrived home just in time for the holiday season. 5,000 troops approximately will pass through Hartsfield Jackson over the next two days. These are soldiers from Fort Benning. Tomorrow, an additional 3,000 soldiers are expected to arrive from Fort Gordon. It'll be a great holiday treat for their families, everyone in a marvelous mood. For 40 years, MARTA employees have come together to help children. They raise money and plan events to make sure kids in Metro Atlanta get support. And today is one of their favorite days of the year. They filled the MARTA headquarters with gifts, hundreds of bikes, and just about every other toy you can think of. These make Christmas possible for more than 3,000 children in Metro Atlanta. Their parents got to come out and pick presents. And Shaquandra Harris says what Marta gave her today will be the only items under the tree for her four and six year olds. So it really means a lot. A control car. We have this for my son. Was by coming here and getting, you know, toys and stuff that they like. So I was excited. So there will be more bikes on the Marta trains headed to uh, people's homes. And we're excited about that. MARTA employees have a charity club that raised $600,000. It puts on events all year long, but today's gift giveaway is the biggest. A family's hidden history helping save Jewish people during the Holocaust. Your grandfather's secret uncovered only after he died. How his story is now coming to light. And don't forget, we are streaming right now on 11 Alive's YouTube channel. You can subscribe and join the conversation in our community section. More 11 Alive news in primetime next. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they would ah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come. And welcome back, everyone. We have breaking news for you. Of course, the U.S. House continues to march on right now toward the historic nighttime votes to impeach President Trump right now. They are split as severely as the nation could possibly be left and right on this, depending on where you are. And... Uh, who you believe that is in the right here, the, the 45th American president looking to become the third American president to be impeached. And right now they are voting on one of the articles right now. The electronic voting has begun after we have heard hours upon hours of speeches from members on the left and the right. Uh, one of the representatives, a Republican from Texas, called it a goat rodeo. And that's some of the verbiage that we have been hearing, again, depending on what your perspective is on all of this. Uh, it is expected, certainly, that the House will impeach President Trump very shortly. 
And then the question will go, what happens in the Senate? Right now, it would appear that that will be stopped in the Senate. But nonetheless, it is uh, certainly a night of history for the American people and for the presidency. And we will continue to keep you updated right here on the ATL. The bravest acts of heroism are often done in silence without an audience or applause, but because it's the right thing to do. Well, Stefan Rinowitz was that kind of hero, a Polish diplomat during World War II. He secretly forged passports for Jewish citizens to save them from the Holocaust. But he died never telling a soul about what he'd done. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross spoke exclusively with his granddaughter, who never knew about her grandfather's heroic actions until now. Couldn't believe what I read. When Alexandra Ryder first got the email, and I was really shocked. She thought it was a scam. If anything looks suspect, delete it, don't respond, don't open anything. But it had my grandfather's name in the subject line. So I felt compelled to read it. It was from the first secretary to the Polish embassy who explained her grandfather's role in an elaborate scheme during World War II. Had he been caught, I would not be sitting here with you today. And that's the, the beauty of it. Just the, the sheer awesomeness of it all is that he risked everything to save people. Her grandfather was a Polish diplomat who started forging Paraguayan passports for Jewish people at the outbreak of the war. The fake documents would help Jewish families fool the Nazis into thinking they were from a different country. So I wish I could have a conversation with him. I really do because I have so many questions that I would love to know the answers to. Her grandfather never breathed a word of what he did to anyone and moved his family to Argentina after the war. He passed away years ago, and no one ever knew his role in saving thousands of lives. There, there are just no words to describe seeing these photographs and these documents and understanding the magnitude of what he did. But it didn't end there. When the local newspaper ran an article about her grandfather, she got another email the very next day. My grandfather got the passport, and he thought, well, we're good now. From a woman whose grandfather, her grandfather, saved. So imagine the shock. Imagine the, the surprise to find out, wow, there's a survivor. There's an ancestor of a survivor, a passport survivor. Heidi Fishman's grandfather was being sent to Auschwitz when he pulled out the fake document. At the last minute, he um, literally, in front of the train, he showed a German official that he had a passport from Paraguay. Of course, it, he wasn't really from Paraguay. This was a falsified passport. Showed it to the official, and he was allowed off the transport and was not sent to Auschwitz. Um, so that passport really saved his life. Six million men, women, and children were killed in the Holocaust. While they're still counting, the Polish government estimates 8,000 lives were saved because of these fake passports. When bad things happen in the world and we hear about it, we have to do something. Um, Alexandra's grandfather did something. He, he got himself involved and he helped people. Everyone can make a difference and everyone can be a hero. Even an ordinary, everyday person can do something extraordinary for someone else. Heidi and Alexandra talk almost every day now, sharing in the courage and bravery that saved both of their families. It's kind of an adventure because now I get to go back in history and find out what, what more my grandfather did, along with these other men that was so brave to to save these, these people that really needed a ray of sunshine. They needed some hope. Wow, what a story. Well, after Caitlin spoke with Alexandra, she was invited to Poland to receive an award for bravery on behalf of her grandfather. The Polish president thanked her personally for everything her family did to save lives during the Holocaust without ever breathing a word of it to anyone else. Well, what a day. We started off with those temperatures really cold out there. Many of us woke up to those temperatures below freezing. And you can see uh, through the overnight hours, it was colder out there uh, during the overnight. And then early this morning, right at 31 degrees. That was in the 8 o'clock hour. And then it was chilly throughout the morning hours. We saw a lot of sunshine, but it was just slow to warm during the day. In fact, we made it up to 48 degrees. I know you're seeing 47 here, but in between these hourlies, we did get up to 48 degrees for our high temperature. And now the sun is down. We have clear skies. 
highs out there. Temperatures are cooling off pretty quickly. Once again, we are already in the 30s now at the 8 o'clock hour, and it's only going to get colder out there. Take a look. Most places are now in the 30s. We still have Rome at 40. Athens is 42. Eatonton, 41 degrees, but everybody else in those upper 30s around Atlanta, a few mid 30s down south and west of the city and some mid 30s up in North Georgia. Blairsville just one degree above freezing at this hour at to 33 degrees. The wind is not that bad tonight. Just a few breezes here and there. Right now we have seven mile an hour winds in Atlanta, eight mile an hour winds in Marietta. So just not as blustery out there tonight as it has been uh, as it was last night. Now it, it's enough of a breeze though that gives us a little bit of a wind chill. It makes it feel like it's 34. Remember the actual temperature is 39, so it makes it feel about five degrees cooler. And most of these wind chills are in the 30s here, except for that one up in Blairsville, where it makes it feel like it's 27 degrees up there in the mountains. We'll get down to 29 here in Atlanta overnight, and then afternoon highs will be around 50. Now remember, we were at 48 for a high temperature today. We'll be a couple of degrees warmer than that tomorrow. So on our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day, we're going with a 9, plenty of sunshine, just some chilly air out there, and these temperatures are below the average. So I'm going to skip over the forecast track for Thursday because nothing's really showing up on there. Then once we get into Friday, uh, a few little changes start moving in and a few clouds start to push into our area. What's happening is we've got an area of, of low pressure that's developing in the Gulf of Mexico. That's going to start streaming a little bit of moisture our way. Now, Friday looks like it's going to be dry. Then on Saturday, it's not going to be a washout. There will be a lot of dry hours during the day here on Saturday, but a few scattered showers will develop, especially later in the day on Saturday, and then that's going to linger into Sunday. So let me show you that low. Now it hasn't developed yet, but it will be developing for the end of the week and the weekend. And so until it does, the models are having a hard time determining how big it's going to be, how much rain is going to be in association with it. This is the European model, which shows the center of that low here moving up toward along the Panhandle region. And on that track, that would send a lot of moisture our way with the higher rain chances on Sunday. This model also shows a few showers lingering into Monday uh, and then finally exiting the area. The other model, the American model, shows the area of low pressure staying more down to the south, and that would make our rain chances a little bit lower here. Uh, so this forecast, which you're about to see right now, is based on the modeling that we have right now. Now on Christmas Eve, we think everything's going to be out of here. It'll be dry with temperatures around 63, and then Christmas day, partly cloudy in 62 degrees. But here is that seven day outlook where we will have uh, 50 degrees for a high Thursday, 54 on Friday, dry conditions, a few showers Saturday, and then the better chance for rain will be on Sunday into early on Monday. And again, this could change depending on the track of that low and the strength of it as well. And then drying out a little warmer though for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with those highs in the lower 60s. This is a story that's gained a lot of national traction over the last few days. Surveillance video showing the moment that two men grabbed a teen off the street right in front of her mother in the Bronx. But tonight, police are allegedly looking into whether it was all a hoax. Aisha Howard, Caitlin Ross, and Cheryl Preheim talk about it on our digital series, Alive at Five. Two men grabbed a teenager as she was walking with her mom. Police issued an Amber Alert. It scared parents all over the country, thinking this girl was kidnapped right out of her mother's hand. Now, New York police are looking into the strong possibility that she made up the whole thing, that the daughter set this up as a hoax. Surveillance video shows the moment the men jumped out of the car in the Bronx, grabbing 16-year-old Carol Sanchez. Police immediately released this video to the public. They asked for help. They offered a $2,500 reward. Then yesterday, police revealed the teenager had been safe. She was not hurt. Sources tell our NBC station in, in New York the teen may have staged the kidnapping with the help of her boyfriend. There are also reports the teen was upset because her mom wanted to move out of the country and she did not want to go. Police are now investigating. They'll recommend charges potentially against this 16 year old girl. So many resources, so much time, so much hysteria fear. and fear mm -hmm. all across the country. You couldn't open your social media right. without seeing Carol Sanchez's face in that video being shared. So. It, it has to be yeah. a lesson in some regard, but oh, it's and a tough. mom yeah. who felt guilty because she tried to keep her daughter from being taken. I mean, she and was couldn't. fighting yeah. those kidnappers off. I posted it as soon as she went missing. Hundreds of comments. People were sharing all over social media, just desperate to find her. And then once we got the news, it might have been a hoax. The reaction was swift. I want to go right to the comments because people have a lot to say about this. We'll start with Naima, who says, "What if her mom got seriously mm. injured 
or killed. All of these cry wolf incidents are detrimental to the real cases that actually need national attention. I would hate for people to start doubting real victims. Every second that passes could be life or death for these poor kids hmm. who are actually missing. And I did think about that because as journalists, every time I see a missing kid, that immediately gets shared because yeah. you want to do everything you can to help find that right. child. But if people have reason to doubt that these yeah. are real cases, that's not going to get the attention right. it Right. God forbid that somehow it makes someone skeptical when it is something and someone is in danger because when that happens legitimately, every hour that passes, you know, the percentage that the, the child comes home safely goes down. So yeah. time is of the essence. And recently you've seen on social media as well the outcry for um, the attention that needs to be brought to the amount of black and brown girls missing all across the country and mm -hmm. even internationally. Mm -hmm. So people are especially quick to share those things right. because you're thinking that this is a nationwide problem that needs attention. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a really good point. I want to go to another comment. Alan, Alan says, even if it was staged, all those involved should still be charged with kidnapping. And Deborah adds, it's sad for both mom and daughter. Don't know how long they had lived there, but it's hard to up and move so far away from friends and of course a boyfriend. But mama, I feel for you too. Bless you all. I mean, the roller coaster of emotions this mom has been on, it's hard to even put your head around that. Yeah, and now she's facing charges, so we're gonna have to see how this all plays out. So it's 824 right now in Washington, D.C. As it is here, we have breaking news. Now, we are nearing the end of the vote on the first article of impeachment, the abuse of power. And uh, we are just uh, about a minute or two away from having a resolution on that. Article number two is the obstruction of Congress, and they will be voting on that uh, in a while as well. At the same time, President Trump is in Michigan, and he is in the midst of a campaign rally. He said a couple of minutes ago that it really doesn't feel like we're being impeached, end quote. He was telling the crowd, and uh, he says this is just uh, a witch hunt and continues to rail against those that he says uh, are simply trying to get in the way of his presidency. And that is quite a split screen, I suppose, of, uh, of messages on this, this historic night in Washington, D.C., as the House is voting right now. There have been two Democrats who have gone the opposite way, uh, voting no to the article of impeachment on, uh, on Article 1. So we will have more coming your way in a couple of minutes. We will take a break right now and return after this. Hungary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About the, that. Well, reward would be slimming, slimming down. Okay. Yes. Right, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. <laughs> News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crown Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pretty eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel is good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. 
There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is... She is Metro Atlanta's Christmas gift to the world. Brenda Lee, born in 1944, is the remarkable performer behind Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree. We all know it. We all love it. We've been singing it since we were kids. But did you know she got her start right here in our state? She began in Atlanta Television, Atlanta Radio. She was born in Grady Hospital. And we're taking a look back in our Where We Live series, where we explore some little-known facts of our city's most iconic narratives. Brenda Lee's distinctive, powerful voice took her from Southern poverty to the top of American music. Her landmark career began on Atlanta television and radio, and by the 1960s, she was a top-charting solo female vocalist singing rockabilly, pop, and country music. She had 47 U.S. chart hits during the 1960s, surpassed only by Elvis Presley, The Beatles, and Ray Charles. But it was a song by Johnny Marks in 1958 that would make Lee's name synonymous with holiday cheer. She was only 14 at the time. Speaking by phone last week from her Nashville home, she told me she immediately loved the song the first time she had heard it in the office of the legendary Owen Bradley. He had assembled a team of greats to record it with her. It was released as a single that November, but only sold about 5,000 copies, and it didn't do much better the following year in 1959. But it gained traction in subsequent years, eventually selling millions of copies in the 1960s. But she says what really catapulted the song was a famous scene in the movie Home Alone, decades later. Brenda Lee is really amazing. I mean, she's been married to the same guy since 1963. She wow. met at a concert. He, too, was a singer. And I asked her if she ever, you know, sings that great song for her family in mm -hmm. Nashville, where she's lived for 60 years as they gather around the holiday tree. She says, yeah, sometimes. If, if they ask me, I'll do it. But she said she really likes to go around the neighborhood over the years caroling. And, and I also asked her, I said, well, what's that like when you go to somebody's door and, my goodness, it's Brenda Lee singing, rocking around the Christmas tree. She goes... You know, it's a mixed bag. Sometimes they just shut the door on me. Well, I doubt it. I mean, I mean, it's such a classic. Like it you is said, such a it great is song, like you hear it? it in the mall, you hear it on the radio yeah. every holiday season. It's one of those songs you have to hear. Your holiday's not complete without it. So that's, that's right. And and she said the, the guy who wrote this song also wrote Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer oh, and wow. Holly Jolly Christmas that we hear from Burl Ives. Mm -hmm. And she said no matter what he tried to do in country music. He could never do anything but Christmas. Wow. So it's really weird. Well, that's interesting. Certainly, I love when you bring out these, these facts that's about people from Atlanta. I love fun it. Fun stuff. It's a great city we live in with a lot of interesting people and interesting sure lives that have passed here. A lot of uh, other interesting things happening today. Yeah. Exciting day. It's signing day early for Georgia and Georgia Tech. Who were the big flips and where did the top local players in the state sign? We've got your recruiting roundup next. Come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foyne Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. 
where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go oh, to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. It is one of the fastest growing populations in the state, but it remains one of the most undercounted communities as well. That's why nonprofits in the area are teaming up to reach the Asian American community about the 2020 census right around the corner. 11 and Lives to New Her explains why these groups are involved. Well, the census cards go out this March, and these nonprofits say the data from the census helps with many initiatives that will last for the next decade, involving millions of dollars in government funding. We've been around for about 40 years now. It's work Victoria Wynn's passionate about, helping amplify Asian American voices in Atlanta. We have such a, um, a thriving Asian American community here in the South that people don't often recognize. To help reflect that, the Center for Pan-Asian Community Services is pushing awareness of the 2020 census with its APPI Complete Count Committee aimed at the diverse Asian population. In 2010 and just watching what happened after 2000 Census Bureau, we know that there were a lot of gaps maybe a lot of resources that didn't land in our communities. Their partners at Asian Americans Advancing Justice Atlanta say those resources and funding are critical. The 2010 census showed at least 30 percent growth in the Asian American population in nearly every state. In Georgia, it grew by 83 percent. She says since then, it's continued to grow and spread beyond Metro Atlanta. 2020 is a really important time to capture that information, especially as those cities continue to like grow and plan for that growth. And planning starts with making sure people know the difference they can make through the census. Our job is to share that with our communities. Now, because these organizations say the Asian population itself is so diverse in Georgia, the website can be accessed through nearly 20 different languages. They partnered with groups across the state to get the word out about the census. All right, let's go back to Washington, D.C., and the House denied a majority of the House has voted to impeach President Trump for high crimes and misdemeanors. The vote marked only the third time in American history that the full chamber has approved articles of impeachment against a sitting president. So it was largely along party line votes, and it represents a, a culmination of the sprawling three month investigation that was conducted by multiple committees. And again, so that was Article 1, and this time they move on for a vote on Article 2, which is the obstruction of Congress. And the bullet points on this, again, in, in case you're just joining us, uh, a majority of the House now votes to impeach the president, and the vote marks only the third time in American history that they have impeached a president. Meanwhile, the president is in Michigan at this hour, and he has uh, made a boisterous speech inside a very packed arena uh, during the vote saying that he is in the midst of a witch hunt and it's unfair and went on that the Democrats are out to get him and have been since 2016. So that is the very latest from Washington. We'll have more of an update for you coming as uh, we learn about the vote here on the second article 
of impeachment, which is expected to pass as well. We have some dry air in place right now. We didn't have any rain around. We had a lot of sunshine, clear skies. It was really nice. And this purple color that you see right here indicates that very dry air that we have in place. And this is going to be the pattern as we go into the end of the week. But once we get to the weekend, a little more moisture is going to start building in. We have an area of low pressure that is developing down in the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to start spreading some of that moisture our way, meaning our rain chances are going to increase. Now, I don't think Saturday is going to be a washout. We'll have a few scattered showers here Saturday. Sunday looks like the day with the best rain chances and the um, really the better coverage of heavier rain is going to be down to the south. And our models are kind of having a hard time with this area of low pressure because it hasn't even developed yet. So until it develops, that'll give us a better gauge on how strong this low is going to be and what track it is going to take. If it goes more to the south, the heavier rain will stay to the south. If it tracks more to the north, then we'll see our rain chances increase a little bit more. Stay with us. Coming up in just a few minutes, I'll show you that seven day outlook, which will give you our take on what we see right now with the models on those rain chances for the weekend. And if that's going to get out of here in time for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. For the next three or four years, uh, I'll be attending oh. Oh, the University of Georgia. <laughs> it was it was one of the biggest moments on early signing day, and let's do a little recruiting roundup right now. UGA signed all of the commits that they were expected to on early signing day, plus a couple more. Wide receiver Jermaine Burton flipped from. LSU to Georgia, making him the fourth wide receiver to sign with the Dogs today. The Dogs obviously needed help in the receiving core, and they may need some help at quarterback, too. They signed four-star quarterback Carson Beck out of Jacksonville. He says he is set and ready to go. It's almost necessary to go in early just to get that experience and kind of learn the speed of college football. So I'm definitely excited about it all. And, uh, and I, I feel like anywhere you go, I mean, you have to, you always have to prepare like you're the starter because even if Jake were to stay, say I was the number two guy, if he got injured, I got to step in. So here's where UGA ranks nationally, according to Rivals.com. They were able to stay in the top five. Look at Clemson, that program with Davos Sweeney, man. That, that is, they are really getting it done up there. Uh, they still have a, a few more commits that Georgia would like to sign by February. And Georgia Tech, well, they were able to move up into the top 25. There was a lot of drama leading up to, to signing day for Georgia. They, they weren't sure how Coach Sam Pittman leaving for Arkansas would impact their offensive line recruits. Kirby Smart hired former Ole Miss coach Matt Luke, and he was able to lock down four linemen today. Coach Smart couldn't be more thrilled with his new hire. To do what he's done in the short amount of time he's done, it was pretty remarkable um, because it was, a, it was a tough timing situation. And, you know, so happy for Sam and Jamie, the opportunity they've gotten. But uh, he's come in, Matt's come in, and, and put the, put the, put the Band-Aid on the bleeding and done a tremendous job and uh, turned those, those three guys around pretty quick. Let's look at some of the local signings in Georgia. Tate Ratledge from the Darlington School. He's the top lineman in Georgia. And one of those recruits, Matt Luke, was able to secure for Georgia. He wasn't the only top local recruit. Athens Academy's Lyneth Whitehead announced his decision today, committing to Tennessee, a talented athlete out of Athens. And the top uncommitted athlete in Georgia today, the outside linebacker Philip Webb, out of Lanier, chose LSU at Ogeron, uh, doing a great job in recruiting uh, in Georgia this year. Some great benefits for him. So on to the flats we go. Georgia Tech head coach Jeff Collins getting ready for year two. Had one of the biggest flips of the day. He flipped a four-star quarterback, Jeff Sims, from FSU to the jacket. Sims decommitted earlier in the week, and his decision came down to the wire. It's a great opportunity, and the coach is a real junior, and it's just, it just felt right. When did you know? Yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yesterday. I knew yesterday. Um, it was a close battle between Maryland and Georgia Tech, but Georgia Tech felt right in my heart. All right, we look forward to watching him play in the years ahead. That's a wrap for early signing day. You can catch all of the signings on 11alive.com. We got you covered right there. And we continue to follow that breaking news out of Washington, D.C. Right now, Article 2 of the Articles of Impeachment against President Donald Trump has passed. That is for obstruction of Congress. That first article passing earlier just a short time ago, that one for abuse of power. Again, these votes coming largely down 
party lines. As Jeff mentioned earlier in this newscast, President Trump is at a campaign rally, a rally right now, speaking to a large crowd of supporters, telling them it doesn't feel like it's an impeachment. Uh, Vice President Pence saying that the Democrats are having their say right now. Republicans will have their say in January. The next step in this process will be for it to move to the Senate. So we will continue to watch right now. They are telling that those final votes right there, Article 2 has passed. Uh, the Senate, both of those articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump for abuse of power and obstruction of Congress passing in Washington, D.C. tonight. We'll, of course, continue to keep you updated right here on the ATL and uh, later on this evening on 11 at, at long on Up Late tonight. Still to come tonight, surveillance of Snellville police looking for a couple. Check out the surveillance video. They say there's a couple of holiday Grinches out there accused of scamming a restaurant using counterfeit money. So the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this today. Ooh, did I not text you? All right. in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jeff. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. The Snellville Police Department needing your help identifying a pair of counterfeiters. Police say two people walked into a mellow mushroom and then they passed along counterfeit $50 bills. The restaurant's co-owner told 11 Alive's Donovan Harris it's upsetting that people would steal from his path, especially around the holidays. My servers, my employees, they're all trying to, you know, prepare for the holidays, help out where they can, and then people are just taking advantage of them. Take a look at this security cam footage. The wig-wearing suspect was chatting with one of the cashiers at Mellow Mushroom, sipping their drink and appearing to be listening. Unsuspecting, the cashier walked away, and that's when the suspect snatched one of the restaurant server's tip envelopes off of the counter. There's about $200 in the bag. 
And so the server lost all her money for the day, and then, you know, we lost our money. The Snellville Police Department said they are looking for these three suspects. They said the man pictured was driving the getaway car. And the Mellow Mushrooms co-owner has a message for those who he says stole from his restaurant. I want them behind bars. Snellville police say similar incidents occurred recently at a nearby Chick-fil-A and a clothing store. And police are still investigating whether or not the same people are responsible for those crimes as well. We had temperatures today that were a lot cooler than where we should be for this time of year. This morning, we started off below freezing. It was 31 degrees. It was a really chilly start. And with the wind, it made it feel even colder out there. Our high today didn't even make it up into the 50s. We were in the upper 40s. 48 degrees was our high temperature. We should be at 53 this time of year for a high. So our temperature is today about 5 degrees below where we should be. And same thing for our low. We should be at 36 this time of year. We were about to 5 degrees below the average. No rain in our area. So we're a little bit more than 6 and a half inches below where we should be in rainfall for the year. We're keeping an eye on these temperatures tonight as we're watching them fall hour by hour. We're now officially in the 30s at 39 degrees. Athens is still in the 40s. Eatonton in the 40s. Rome is in the 40s. Everybody else is in those 30s and even in Blairsville right now. Just one degree uh, above freezing at 33. We're going to go with a 9 on the wasometer. That's our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day. Starting off at 29 in the morning, getting up to 50 in the afternoon. We're going to see another day with a, a lot of sunshine around. It's just going to still be below average. That's why we're not going with a 10 or 11. Even though it's going to look beautiful, it's just going to be kind of chilly out there and below where we should be for this time of year. I'm going to skip into Friday because that's when we see some of these changes that are moving our way. No rain on Friday, but we will see a few more clouds building in. Once we get into Saturday, this model still not showing a lot in the form of rain on Saturday. I do think we'll have some scattered showers that will develop, especially later in the day on Saturday and not really showing up a lot here on this model. But let, let me widen out a little bit more because we've got this area of low pressure that's in the Gulf of Mexico. This is the European model. This one is being a little more generous with those rain chances, bringing the showers in here Saturday and then higher rain chances in here on Sunday as well, and then lingering even into early on Monday. So it'll be dry the next couple of days, chilly mornings, and then afternoons at 50 on Thursday, 54 on Friday. 52 Saturday with a few of those showers that'll move in later in the day and then a better chance for rain on Sunday. Some of those showers lingering into Monday as well, but all the models agreeing that that rain will be out of here once we get into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Drier weather, a little mild though, with high temperatures above average in the lower 60s. All fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscasts, not enough for you. Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, and Auntie want to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. 
you hear what happened today, I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 You can assume what you're doing, but speed the machine. Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which... A historic night has the House votes on impeaching President Trump. The president, meanwhile, is in Michigan, where he continues to denounce the impeachment as a sham, a hoax, a witch hunt. Joining me right now is Ron Hart, our syndicated columnist in residence. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. You know, we talk a lot about history in the context of these impeachment hearings, but yeah. it doesn't feel like it. It <laughs> feels so partisan. It yeah. feels like just a prelude to what's going to be a very raucous 2020 election cycle. Yeah, the Democrats are really afraid there's going to be meddling in the uh, 2020 election by the American voter. <laughs> they have to get him out before that happens, you know. They can't leave this impeachment thing. It's harder for, you know, Democrats to leave impeachment than it is to leave Scientology. I mean, they're, they're, they're just having a hard time letting this thing go. So, yeah, that's the real story. This is completely partisan. It should be an embarrassment. I think Ben Franklin told us when he gave us our country, he says it's a republic if you can hold on to it. This will test that. This is not the way it's supposed to be. I like any good Ben Franklin reference. We don't hear a lot of those on this television station anymore. He's good. He was one of the best. He was one of the best. 2019 is now on its way uh, yeah. out the door. A new year comes and an election season that is going to be something to behold, I think, in the snow of New Hampshire and Iowa. It'll be fun. I think, uh, you know, you have some pretty good Democrat candidates. You have a lot of them. There's 25 that filed to run for office, you know. Um, and it, it takes about two minutes to fill out the form, which explains a lot why we have the feel we have. Christmas feel different to you as you get older, or are we looking at it in the context that, you know, America is a little more rough and tumble, and we're not quite as melancholy as we once were, and Christmas takes on a different yeah. a, a different viewpoint. Am I being a uh, bah humbug here? No. I walked into Houston's the other day. I see this family sitting there quietly praying that the heads, heads are down, five of them like that. And I said, isn't that nice? They're just kind of praying before their meal. and found out they're all on their cell phone. <laughs> so, it's a little different world than yours and mine. It, it is different, but Christmas is such a, a great time to sort of take inventory of family and friends yeah. and good health and all of the things that oftentimes we're too busy to acknowledge. Yeah, that and the New Year. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure around Christmas, way too material, too Madison Avenue for me. It feels like if you don't buy a family member a Lexus with a bow on it, you've kind of fallen short. You Can know, I tell you how much I loathe, despise, <laughs> that commercial. hate that? I'm, I'm sorry to be a hater, but yeah. I, I hate that commercial. Yeah. I think it sends such a negative vibe out to the country about yeah. materialism. Yeah, I hate that commercial. And whoever wrote the Cars for Kids jingle, that bugs me. Uh, 1-800, <laughs> yes. I, I, I know that one very I know, well. I feel like strangling the radio when I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a good charity, though, apparently. Yeah, apparently so. Bad jingle. Bad jingle. Ron Hart, Merry Christmas. You too. Have All a right. good one. Thanks, Thanks. you too. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel it's good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive.
Televised newscasts not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Fun. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. So what's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together, we come alive. Amplifying voices. Somebody find me up. An awesome update to share with you tonight. Atlanta has a new national champion. The nine and under Atlanta Bulldogs defended their title in Miami over the weekend. Wow, if you're going to be a nine-year-old playing in Miami, that's the way you do it. Woo. Uh, you may remember 11 Alive's Ron Jones had the story about this team. They needed $23,000 to play in the game, and they were about $22,000 short. 11 Alive got involved and raised all that money for those kids to go to South Florida. Yeah, after our story, the team received a massive donation, allowing them to travel to Florida to play for that national title. And now they are coming home as champions. So big congratulations out to all of them. Congratulations to everyone who wanted to get involved after this story and help get this team on to glory. Yeah, good for them. Let's hope that uh, they go on to other national championships. Yeah, we might be yeah. seeing some of them on Team 1-1 in the future. Oh, we you might. Nine know. years old, yeah. already at the status to travel to Miami to play in a championship Needing game. 23 grand Undefeated. to go play in Miami. That's yeah, a lot. that is Those a lot. Some stars. Look, that's a trip. Yeah, you that's know a trip. this is an expensive <laughs> sport. Yeah, that is a trip. Well, we are so glad they made it. And I'm glad they won. It was yeah. worth exactly. it, right? Everyone who donated, it was for a great cause. Hey, guys, well, it is almost 9 o'clock, and we have a lot coming up next on 11 Live News Prime Time. Some new violations against the company already in trouble for releasing too much ethylene oxide into the air in Metro Atlanta. And a massive fire brings rush hour traffic to a complete stop. We are live in DeKalb County with an update. 11 Alive News Primetime on the ATL starts now. About half an hour ago, the House of Representatives voted on the articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump. He's facing two, one for abuse of power and another for obstructing Congress. This is a historic day in our history. Let's get you now with the live photo right now out of D.C. as Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi gets ready to address the press coming up here in a little bit. So this impeachment inquiry involves allegations President Trump asked the Ukraine president to investigate Joe Biden, who we know is running against him for president in 2020. It has been a historic day in D.C. and also a very divisive one. In this, during a period in American history, we know that is already incredibly divisive. NBC's Alice Barr has been on Capitol Hill all evening following the action. The weight of history hangs over the U.S. Capitol today as the House holds its final vote on the impeachment of President Trump. Today we are here to defend democracy for the people. One by one, representatives speaking in support or opposition. Today is going to be a lot of things. What it is not is fair. What it is not is about the truth. All with an eye toward the legacy of impeaching an American president for only the third time. Dear Ellie and James. Congressman Joe Kennedy reading a letter about, telling his you know, children why he's voting yes. He broke our laws. He threatened our security. Democrats hold the majority in the House and nearly everyone supports impeaching the president for abusing his power and obstructing Congress. President Trump watching and fuming, tweeting, can you believe I will be impeached today? In the middle of the House debate, the president leaving Washington for a campaign rally in Michigan. Democrats insisting the case against him is clear. The president committed constitutional crimes. The president's crimes are impeachable while Republicans line up solidly to defend President Trump. I believe this is the most unfair, politically biased, 
rigged process. A process now being written into history with the Republican-controlled Senate eager to begin the next chapter. All right, well, what's President Trump up to tonight? This is a live look from Michigan, where the president is at a rally speaking to his supporters. We are monitoring every moment of this historic happening event. We're going to bring you the very latest as it comes into the newsroom tonight. An exclusive NBC News Wall Street Journal poll shows Americans split on the question of impeachment. 48% of Americans believe President Trump should be impeached and removed from office, while an equal number say they disagree. That's not a big change from the previous poll back in October. This latest survey taken last week also shows more than half of the country approves of the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. And now to this massive fire that broke out in DeKalb County during evening rush hour traffic. 11 Alive's Elwin Lopez is live on Flat Shoals Road with an update. Hey, Elwin. Yeah, Natisha Aisha, fire officials tell me that crews arrived here around 5.30 p.m. and saw that not one home, but two homes were actually on fire. The good news here is that no one was living inside those homes and no one was injured. Firefighters were able to extinguish the flames pretty quickly, but I want you to take a look at this video from our 11 Alive Sky Tracker. It shows how massive these flames were. Now, it's something you certainly don't want to see in a busy area as it was during rush hour here on Flat Shoals Road. There is a family dollar right in front of these homes, and just a few feet away, there are actually three gas stations. Still no word on what caused those massive flames. Fire officials tell me they don't believe it was electrical, and investigators are here on the scene trying to determine what actually happened. Now, at this point, fire officials are not ruling out the fact that Perhaps someone may have been inside one of these homes right before the fire started, but they say that no one was inside the home when they arrived. All right, thank you, Elwin. We're a pair of home invasions making headlines tonight in the metro area. So in both cases, the suspects were shot by homeowners. Let's start in Brookhaven. A homeowner returned home Wednesday afternoon and found an intruder inside the house on Wilmont Drive. The homeowner shot and killed the suspect. Police don't believe anyone else was involved. Georgia law allows us to use force up to and including deadly force to protect our lives, the lives of a third party, or to protect against property. Um, so uh, we are, we'll be looking at those things to find out if there's a self-defense claim involved here. No word on whether charges will be filed against the homeowner here in this case. And in Conyers yesterday, a homeowner was shot in a home invasion, but police also believe she shot one of the suspects. It happened on Lost Valley Drive. Police say two men kicked in her door. She ran upstairs to her bedroom, but then they kicked in that door too. She was shot twice and rushed to the hospital. The suspects got away. No word on the motive or if anything was taken. The BD plant is getting hit with another notice from Georgia's Environmental Protection Division for violating air quality rules. We've told you about this before, how the facility in Covington has come under fire for releasing a cancer-causing toxin into the air. This latest violation focuses on an off-site warehouse where sterilized medical equipment is stored. EPD says the warehouse doesn't have a permit for the amount of ethylene oxide it's releasing. It's asking BD to monitor the air and inst install equipment to control emissions. In a tweet, Governor Brian Kemp calls the findings concerning. He also says the state is demanding BD remedy this. He goes on to say they're exploring legal action and expect BD to do the right thing for Newton County families. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, where we are um, right now doing a Facebook Live and doing TV for you on the ATL, talking about a lot of cold air. I'm on Facebook Live right here on my phone. Y'all see that right here. And we have a lot of folks making some comments about the um, cold air coming in. We have Michael Williamson says, how many days till spring? Dawn Stone says, cold is not my friend. Catherine Reed says, it's cold out there. Stacy McKinney says, I like warm weather. Um, and Mary Roberts says hello. So if you would like to join us on Facebook Live, go to my Facebook page, Chris Holcomb 11 Alive, and we'll continue this conversation after I'm finished with this hit for you on TV. Let, let's look at this cold air. You can see what we're talking about here, the blue color indicating the really cold air in place. We're in the 30s now, 38 degrees here in Atlanta. Most places are in the 30s except for Athens. You're the only place right now that is in the 40s. Let's take a look at the bigger picture, and you can see what we're watching here with uh, over the next 12 hours. These temperatures will continue to drop 
drop will move down into those lower 30s by tomorrow morning. I even think here around sunrise time in the morning we will dip down to 29 degrees in between these hourlies here and then plenty of sunshine for the first part of the day, but it's going to be slow to warm 33 at 9. I do think it'll be a little warmer tomorrow afternoon compared to what we had out there today. We'll talk more about that and let you know about this area of low pressure developing in the Gulf. We'll talk about how that's going to spread some rain in here unfortunately for the weekend. All right, thank you, Chris. A drug bust leads to two alleged gang members arrest in Gwinnett County. Investigators believe Jorge Rosales and Damian Martinez are members of the street gang known as Serenos. GBI says during the bust, investigators seized several guns, nearly 10 pounds of meth, two pounds of marijuana, and some cocaine. I find the fields to be uh, fertile for hunting. Uh, we're not having any problem finding uh, criminal gangs. Uh, to focus on and to target with these investigations, so I expect similar results in the near future. Investigators say this is just the beginning for them and more arrests could be on the way. Topping our speed feed tonight, Gainesville police have charged a woman with the murder of her four-month-old daughter. Police arrested Loquisha Jackson. She is accused of suffocating her child inside their apartment. Jackson is currently being held at the Hall County Detention Center. A Buckhead Steakhouse hopes to reopen in February after fire destroyed the kitchen last month. Atlanta firefighters posted video from Little Alley Steak inside the Alliance Building. The Atlanta Business Chronicle reports the owners are spending one and a half million dollars to get Little Alley back in business, but they're still taking care of their own. They also kept 182 employees on the payroll during the closure and gave them 30% holiday bonuses. And the man accused of pretending to be a cop and trying to handcuff a masseuse, well, he got himself in some handcuffs as well. Police arrested Christopher Getter. They say he received a massage at Massage Angels in Roswell. That's when they say he suddenly tried to cuff the masseuse and claimed to be a Roswell police officer. He then allegedly proceeded to perform what investigators call indecent acts. Getter is in the Fulton County Jail and faces multiple charges. Well, it's been more than a week since flooding shut down a section of Grady Hospital tonight. Officials say the trauma center's recovery is ongoing. On Facebook, Grady says it's now receiving more patients, including those being treated for trauma, stroke, and burns. And a mobile hospital from North Carolina is there on site being assembled to help lessen the load there for those workers. Thanks to a state of emergency, Governor Kemp declared last week repairs are expected to continue for several weeks. A family's hidden history helping save Jews during the Holocaust. A grandfather's secret uncovered only after he died. How his incredible story is now coming to light. Chief Meteorologist Chris Holcomb live on Facebook right now taking your weather questions about how cold it's going to get. You can join the conversation right now on his Facebook page. And hey, don't forget, we are streaming right now on 11 Alive's YouTube channel. Subscribe and join the conversation in the community section. We've got more 11 Alive news in prime time after the break. Five uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Mom. Where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? Where's my pen? Have you seen it? Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go away. Oh, Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Auntie. No. <laughs> Auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it. His... The 
but bravest acts of heroism are often done in silence without an audience or any applause, but because it's the right thing to do. Stefan Rubinowitz was the kind of hero, that kind of hero, Polish diplomat during World War II. He secretly forged passports for Jewish citizens to save them from the Holocaust, but he died never telling one single soul about what he'd done. 11 Alive's Caitlin Ross spoke exclusively to his granddaughter, who never even knew about her grandfather's heroic actions until now. I couldn't believe what I read. When Alexandra Ryder first got the email, I was really shocked. She thought it was a scam. If anything looks suspect, delete it, don't respond, don't open anything. But it had my grandfather's name in the subject line. So I felt compelled to read it. It was from the first secretary to the Polish embassy who explained her grandfather's role in an elaborate scheme during World War II. Had he been caught, I would not be sitting here with you today. And that's the, the beauty of it. Just the, the sheer awesomeness of it all is that he risked everything to save people. Her grandfather was a Polish diplomat who started forging Paraguayan passports for Jewish people at the outbreak of the war. The fake documents would help Jewish families fool the Nazis into thinking they were from a different country. So I wish I could have a conversation with him. I really do because I have so many questions that I would love to know the answers to. Her grandfather never breathed a word of what he did to anyone and moved his family to Argentina after the war. He passed away years ago, and no one ever knew his role in saving thousands of lives. There, there are just no words to describe seeing these photographs and these documents and understanding the magnitude of what he did. But it didn't end there. When the local newspaper ran an article about her grandfather, she got another email the very next day. My grandfather got the passport, and he thought, well, we're good now. From a woman whose grandfather, her grandfather, saved. So imagine the shock. Imagine the, the surprise to find out, wow, there's a survivor. There's an ancestor of a survivor, a passport survivor. Heidi Fishman's grandfather was being sent to Auschwitz when he pulled out the fake document. At the last minute, he um, literally, in front of the train, he showed a German official that he had a passport from Paraguay. Of course, it, he wasn't really from Paraguay. This was a falsified passport. Showed it to the official, and he was allowed off the transport and was not sent to Auschwitz. Um, so that passport really saved his life. Six million men, women, and children were killed in the Holocaust. While they're still counting, the Polish government estimates 8,000 lives were saved because of these fake passports. When bad things happen in the world and we hear about it, we have to do something. Um, Alexandra's grandfather did something. He, he got himself involved and he helped people. Everyone can make a difference and everyone can be a hero. Even an ordinary, everyday person can do something extraordinary for someone else. Heidi and Alexandra talk almost every day now, sharing in the courage and bravery that saved both of their families. It's kind of an adventure because now I get to go back in history and find out what, what more my grandfather did, along with these other men that was so brave to to save these, these people that really needed a ray of sunshine. They needed some hope. This story becomes even more remarkable after Caitlin spoke with Alexandra. She was invited to Poland to receive an award for bravery on behalf of her grandfather. The Polish president thanked her personally for everything her family did to save lives during the Holocaust without ever breathing a word of it to anyone else. Good evening, everybody. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers talking to you on TV right now. You see my phone here. I'm also talking to uh, my followers on uh, Facebook Live. They've been asking me a lot of questions. You know, I've had this cough going on for the past couple of weeks that just doesn't seem like it's going away. Uh, some folks have been asking about that. Um, Gary Simmons says, you do so much talking, it's hard to get rid of that cough. 
Um, Raditha Dempsey says, I'm still here. Vicki McGowan says, your voice needs a rest. So I plan to take a little rest next week. I'm going to take a few days off next week. Anyway, let's talk about the weather. It is cold out there. Luckily, it is also dry. No rain in our area. All that rain has moved well down to the south and out of here. In fact, when you look around the southeast, no rain anywhere around. We're going to continue this dry pattern as we move through the next few days. All right, let's look at those temperatures because it is rather chilly out there. In fact, here's a look at our temperatures for the last 20 hours. You'll see here that it got cold this morning with our temperatures that moved down to below freezing. We hit 31 degrees early this morning and uh, then it was slow to warm as we move through the rest of the daytime hours here. Our high temperatures only made it up into the 40s today. It shows here 47, but really in between these hourlies, we hit 48 degrees for our high temperature. And now during the evening, once that sun went down, temperature started falling again. We're now at 38 degrees and those temperatures continue to fall tonight. Right now we're 38. The only 40 on the map is in the Athens where it's 40 degrees. Everybody else is in those 30s. Close to freezing in LaGrange at 33. Peachtree City is 33. We also have 33 up in Blairsville, 34 in Clayton. So not much of a wind tonight. Yeah, there are a couple of breezes around, but it's just not that blustery and not really windy. So eight mile an hour winds here, a 10 mile an hour wind in Marietta. So that still gives us a little bit of a wind chill. It drops it from 38 to 32 is how it feels out there. So it feels like it's freezing here and over many areas of North Georgia. But thank goodness that wind has died down just a little bit. So in the morning, we start off a little cooler than we were today. This morning's low was 31. We'll be at 29 in the morning and then afternoon highs a couple of degrees warmer than we were today. We'll get up to 50. So on that scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day, we're going to go with a 9. So here's the forecast track skipping into Friday. You see a few clouds around in our area, but we don't expect rain on Friday. We're watching that area of low pressure that's developing in the Gulf of Mexico. Saturday, we're going to have a lot of dry hours, a few clouds around, some scattered showers here and there. Rain chances will be about 30% later in the day. But we're watching this area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico, depending on exactly where this tracks and how strong it is that will determine how much rain it is the way it looks right now based on the models we will have a few showers here better chance for showers on Sunday some of those linger into Monday but we do think that'll all be moving out of here once we get into Christmas Eve and also on Christmas Day with drier weather around. So dry conditions Thursday, Friday, a few more clouds getting up to 54. Scattered showers Saturday, better chance of rain Sunday lingering into Monday, then drying out just in time for Santa for Christmas Eve and uh, Christmas Day with uh, temperatures on the warm side, though, into the 60s. It's been five years since Chanel Anderson drowned on the line with 911, trapped in her SUV as it sank in a Cherokee County pond. The reveal's chief investigator, Brendan Keefe, shows us dramatic improvements to 911 that Chanel is still inspiring. Chanel Anderson was trapped in her sinking SUV, her last breaths wasted trying to help 911 find this Cherokee County pond. Give me the one more time, it's not working. 19 minutes passed before the first rescuers arrived, too late to save her life. Change has been affected 100% solely because of her. Carl Hall is the chief of Alpharetta 911, the center that answered Chanel's call. Okay, are you before Windward or after Windward? Five years later, this is the first next generation 911 center in the state of Georgia. What does next generation 911 mean? 911 was at the speed of dial up. Now 911 is at the speed of light because it's all transferred via fiber. And that means dispatchers have far more confidence when a 911 caller is plotted on their maps. Also, emergency calls are finally routed by the phone's location, not the cell tower address. If someone calls 911 right here, right now, where we're sitting in Alpharetta, they're going to be routed to this center based on where they are, not on their tower now, right? That's correct. When we began investigating 911 five years ago, we went looking for the state agency we could hold accountable. There wasn't one. There's a Georgia Emergency Communications Authority. That didn't exist before this. Did not exist had not even been thought of, I don't believe. Now the new state agency distributes more than $200 million a year to local 911 centers, and Georgia qualified for $4 million in federal grant money to transform the state to next generation 911. What do you wish for is to never have to transfer a 911 phone call, that it goes to the right spot, 
the first time. That's what our callers deserve. So this change is going to save lives, but this is just Alpharetta for now. When can we expect all cities in Georgia to get this kind of an upgrade? Cheryl, it will take years to move the whole state to that next generation 911 system. In the meantime, the Georgia Emergency Communications Authority, they're consolidating all those city and county proprietary maps so callers who reach the wrong 911 center will never again be off the grid like Chanel was five years ago. All right, important changes. Brendan, I know you've got a lot more coming up at 11. So we'll see you up late at 11. So we've heard a lot of warnings recently, but are they actually stopping teens from vaping? A new study shows some troubling numbers. Hit drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. Yeah, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah, I've got like the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Chess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. okay. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, well, even more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Blog, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Blog on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm gonna go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. We've been flooded with warnings recently and passing them along to you about the dangers of vaping THC. And now there's a new study that says teenagers are vaping nicotine and marijuana at higher rates than before. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has the details. The new study out this morning reveals the number of teenagers vaping marijuana rose dramatically in the past year, with a percentage among high school seniors nearly doubling, jumping from 7.5% to 14%. That's according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse. The survey, which relies on self-reported data from more than 42,000 teenagers, even found that 3.5% of 12th graders and 3% of 10th graders are vaping marijuana nearly every single day. Alarming numbers as public health officials report 2,400 hospitalizations and 52 deaths linked to vaping lung illnesses. Many of those cases tied to inhaling THC the high-inducing ingredient in marijuana. The study also found the number of teens vaping nicotine every day shot up to 12%, and more than a third of 12th graders have used e-cigarettes at least once in the past year. Many teens who never smoke cigarettes have made vaping a habit, like 15-year-old Luca Kennard. I noticed I was like, this is getting out of control. As vaping increases, the use of other drugs has declined. Alcohol use and cigarette smoking are both down, and the abuse of prescription opioids is at its lowest level. New stats suggesting that vaping marijuana is the new vice of choice among America's teenagers. 
Right now, Congress is considering new laws that would raise the federal minimum age for smoking from 18 to 21. That change would include vaping products and more traditional tobacco products. Their story showed that a single gesture can be life changing. Next, a look back at an unforgivable, unforgettable Brave Conquer Spear story. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. would wait the next week. You're all, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my life Dante Sipp is a young gymnastics coach who says he needed a miracle to save his life he was running out of hope and time. That miracle came through a stranger, a young mom who just happened to hear his story. Lauren says she knew she was the person meant to help him. Round off, long and go. No one will ever forget this night. Go. This practice. Good, better, I'll take it. And it has nothing to do with Round practice off. at all. Dante is a big part of our family. It's fast, fast. fast. Like Coach Dante Sip right, good, I like it. has no idea that his mom and brothers are in the next room. So he doesn't even know we're here right now. Hey, how are you? And no idea Lauren, who's donating a kidney to Dante, has planned a party so they can finally all meet in person. And it's going to happen right before our very eyes really soon. This is yours. Lauren brought gifts, T-shirts she made in honor of what brought their lives together. Praying hands, holding the kidneys. And will keep them connected always. Yay! I can't wait to meet him. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Feels like family already. She's saving my life. 
we just wanted to come surprise you. Well, I'm surprised. Yeah? Yeah. So yeah, I'm surprised. How would you thank somebody for saving your life? <laughs> Looking on, Dante's team, happy and amazed to see the woman who will help save the coach they love and were afraid they would lose. You want to come in? Sometimes there aren't words. Can I get a hug? Can yes. I get a hug? <laughs> their hugs are their thank yous. <laughs> Second chances, life. You can't describe an angel. Family. Two, three. All worth celebrating. Still walking on clouds, so I feel good. I feel amazing. <laughs> the next time they'll see each other. Are you nervous? will be on transplant day. I'm more excited than that. I'm super excited. Yeah, I'm super I'm not excited. nervous at all. Yeah. There's a peak. No one here will ever forget this night. So I jumped out of a plane last year. This is about what it feels like. It's very exciting. <laughs> yes, we ready. All right. <laughs> See, I want to I want to do it now. <sighs> They will never forget how it feels to see the power of kindness and courage. Dance, dance, dance. Dance. We're going to say brave conquers fear. One, two, three. Brave conquers fear. Their friendship was instant. It's like they'd always known each other. On surgery day, two families who'd only known each other a few weeks felt like one. And from this day, their lives would always be connected. <laughs> we are fishing. We, we family now. Good. Really good. Good. I get a brother today. <laughs> yes, I get, I get a sister. Do you like my French beret? <laughs> Just a, a tangible thing to actually see him receiving this gift and her being able to give this gift. And, I, you know, I'm certain they will be lifelong friends. So It's truly a blessing. <laughs> Thank you so much. I feel good. I feel like I am, um, <laughs> I feel like I'm this big, you know, compared to this small. You like my shawl? I like, like it. I like your hat. We got matching hats. I like it. All right, give me a hug. Whenever uh, Dr. Tan is ready, I just go pick up the kidney, bring it in and so it in, and uh, the beauty of living donors, we start the kidney, seeing the kidney working right away. So that's, that's tremendous. Yeah, <laughs> relief. Both of them are what's good about America, and I think that's one of the best things to focus on, is that two strangers from two completely different backgrounds came together to make a, a life-saving, you know, sacrifice. It wasn't enough for Dante Sip to get a life-saving, life-changing gift and a new friend in his donor, Lauren. They both said they felt a responsibility to help others in the same position. So two months after surgery, their Brave Conquers Fear team helped lead the kidney walk. Dante Sips waited eight years for this. I finally got my recipient uh, banner. It feels real good, man. Made possible by Lauren Larison, who will proudly wear donor. How you doing? Good. We're here. Yes. So many ways to bring forth awareness, but I feel like this is, you know, such a large group, a gathering to really like get the word out there. I mean, there's what 100,000 people that are on the needs list every single year, and only about a third of those get donations. Two months after their kidney transplant surgery, they feel like their journey together is really just beginning. Like I might be the donor as far as like this side goes, but I'm the recipient of a blessing from him because, I mean, Dante's taught me so much. I mean, Hoping their connection helps a lot of other people. If people see donations happening, they are more encouraged to actually do it themselves. This is what everything was for, right? Yes, absolutely. So walk here in victory. We made it uh, literally to the finish line. So. Woo! <laughs> Many more good times to come. You can see these stories and more in Cheryl's Brave Conquer Sphere special on Christmas Day at the Times and Channels on your screen. 
We are watching our upper pattern with this cold air that we have in place right now. Temperatures today have been below the average and we're going to see below average temperatures. But as you watch as we put this into motion, you'll notice here that the colder air starts to retreat and go up to the north and we'll start seeing things turn a little milder through the day tomorrow. Now, when I say mild, it's going to be back up into the lower 50s, barely getting into the low 50s. But then that pattern will continue as we head into Friday as well with the colder air well up to the north and then more of these 50s around. And then even into the weekend, we're going to see uh, mild air in place. We're going to be watching this area of low pressure that's going to spread some rain into our area. And then once that moves out, it'll clear out getting into next week. And then we will see uh, some mild air heading into the uh, Christmas Eve day and Christmas Day itself. So no additional major surges of cold air coming our way, except for the one that we have right now. Other than that, that'll start getting a little bit milder each and every day. Stay with us. We'll talk about that area of low pressure in the Gulf of Mexico and whether or not that means rain for your weekend. We'll have more on that in just a few minutes. With the vote in the House of Representatives, President Donald Trump became the third president in U.S. history to officially be impeached. Now that means a full-fledged impeachment trial will now begin in the Senate. We've had our Verify team looking into that process and how it will differ from what we've seen so far. Here's our Jason Puckett. Article 1 of the U.S. Constitution. The House of Representatives shall have the sole power of impeachment. Quote, the Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. Simple, right? The House impeaches a president, the Senate holds the trial. Well, no, not that simple. We've had weeks of testimony in House committees. We heard from advisors, former ambassadors, and more. But when it comes to the Senate, the trial itself could look completely different. Take another look. The Constitution says the Senate will hold the trial, that the senators will be on oath, and that it will take two-thirds vote to convict. But it leaves everything else up to the Senate. So big questions like, will there be witnesses? Have to be debated. In President Andrew Johnson's impeachment, 40 witnesses testified in public. In President Clinton's impeachment, after long debate, witnesses requested in private and videotape clips were played to the Senate. So you can see it's different each and every time. Historically, the Senate majority and minority leaders have worked together to develop the rules. Now that's Mitch McConnell and Chuck Schumer in this case. They both said they want to come up with bipartisan rules like in the past, but it's worth noting the Republicans have enough Senate members to vote through rules without any Democratic support. One last note, the Constitution also says that the Supreme Court Chief Justice will oversee the trial. Now, Chief Roberts in this case, could allow witnesses or rule changes that aren't explicitly written out. But unlike a judge in a courtroom, Justice Roberts can actually be overruled. If a majority votes against his ruling, it's overturned. Bottom line, the Senate holds the power here and they will determine not only the rules for the trial, but how those rules are actually carried out. All right, did you follow that? Well, in other news, Senator Johnny Isaacson has had a long-standing commitment to improving the lives of our country's younger generations. As he gets ready to retire, we're looking back at some of the ways he has influenced education in our state and the nation. And it all started with the call from his former opponent, someone who beat him in Georgia's governor's race, Democrat Zell Miller. Miller asked him to serve as the chairman of Georgia's Board of Education. I got a problem, and I want you to fix it. I said, well, what's that? He said, well, I'm fired the... Board of Education to tonight, and I'm going to ask you them to vote to elect you the chairman. I'm going to ask you to come down here and do whatever you think we need to do to fix this thing. I can't deal with it anymore. So here, here in one day's time, I had gone from not even knowing where the Board of Education was to being asked to be the, super, the uh, chairman, being asked to tell the governor of the state, who I had lost to for governor, who to appoint in his cabinet for the uh, Department of Education. Senator Isaacson led the board until his election to the U.S. House of Representatives in 1999. He served the education committees in both the House and Senate. Those who worked on his staff say his experience was unmatched. No Republican in the Congress knew more about public education than Johnny Isaacson. Every time we sat in the committee hearing room or closed door meetings behind the scenes, everyone just listened to what he had to say because he was one of the few people who was actually a part of the original conversation. Senator Isaacson often gives commencement addresses to high school and college graduates, encouraging them to never stop learning. And he'll be remembered as someone who worked to give young people that opportunity. Ivy League dreams becoming a reality for Atlanta teens. Next, the program at Harvard landing a teacher on the national stage. I got moves to make, call me, but I stay in the flow. So yeah, just do what I say in the Oh, and so I was saying, 
There is always something filming here in Atlanta, from movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. <laughs> So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've nice got guy. the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess? I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Jess, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along Jess. the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. okay. Right, right. About I mean, that. Well, reward would be. Slimming down. Okay, yes. Yeah. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin. You know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. It's not gonna be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning rush weekdays, five to seven a.m. Only on Eleven Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots, created by the artist Jim. to find your voice as a teenager is something that's very important and for some teenagers that can be pretty difficult but with the right teacher it could get some young people all the way to Harvard. What might he mean when he says given to Caesar what is he? Establishing a legacy of greatness can take time unless Brandon Fleming is at the helm. He teaches us about arguing values instead of facts and that actually helps us to win our debates. Two years ago, he created a pipeline for African-American students from Atlanta to Harvard through debate. There is no moral form of leadership. Well, it really depends a lot more on the followers. Fleming's debate team, made up of 30 students from all over the metro, has won the Harvard Debate Council's tournament both years. They even made history as the first black team to ever do it. It's surreal. It is surreal for a man who didn't always excel in school. I hated teachers. I hated teachers. I hated school. The, the only reason why I even wanted to go to college was to play basketball. Basketball carried him to college until a career-ending knee injury forced him to drop out. He found work at a vitamin factory. It was the most painful experience of my life. Um, in fact, it, it was so challenging for me that I, I sunk into a spell of depression um, and I actually tried to kill myself. From those dark moments, he found inspiration to return to school. Um, what seemed like a moment of pain um, was actually the birthing of my passion. Through a movie, The Great Debaters. Debate is blood sport. You must destroy your opponent. Not only that movie ignited a flame within me. And what I hope to do for my, for my students is the same thing. I've never had a teacher who I felt has truly cared about me the way that Mr. Fleming does. That care landed him on Forbes 30 Under 30 list. Affirmation is important and, and affirmation is great. 
But at the end of the day, that's not what we do it for. You know, um, it, these moments give me an opportunity to pause and reflect upon the journey. Now, the success of Atlanta's program could lead to similar ones all across the country. And Brandon Fleming has accomplished so much in just 10 years, but he says he is nothing compared to what his kids will be. Love that story. Well, the flu is forcing several Georgia schools to start their holiday break a little bit early. That tops our speed feed. All six elementary schools in Jackson County, they're going to be closed tomorrow due to a flu and strep outbreak. The superintendent says more than 14% of students and teachers were absent today. The district's four middle and high schools will hold classes as scheduled. All students are set to return to school on January 6th. Yesterday, we told you about how the flu is already widespread in Georgia. Health officials say we don't usually see this much illness until later in the season. Two people in Georgia have died and more than 200 have been hospitalized since late September. No surprise, the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl is a sellout again, and they're expecting a record crowd at Mercedes-Benz Stadium on December 28th. Officials say demand was so high they sold more tickets to LSU-Oklahoma matchup than any previous Peach Bowl, even adding 1,500 standing room only seats. And the University of South Carolina will soon start selling alcohol at sporting events in 2020. Several schools in the SEC now allow alcohol sales at sporting events. Georgia is not one of them. The dogs travel to Columbia next season. That game is scheduled for November 17th. Cold air out there tonight. Clear skies. Temperatures cooling off pretty quickly. We're in the upper 30s right now at 38 degrees. Look at Carrollton. You just moved down to below freezing. It's 31 there. We're at freezing at Covington and LaGrange. Freezing temperatures in Blairsville. Rome, you're just one degree above freezing. So it's really chilly out there tonight. Now in town, we're still in those upper 30s, but we're going to be dropping through the mid 30s around midnight and after and then into those lower 30s, even some upper 20s here early in the morning. I do think in between these hourlies, we will dip down to 29 degrees with sunshine. It's going to look nice out there, but then when you step outside, you're going to feel that really cold air hitting you and it's going to be slow to warm again tomorrow as well. So here's what we're watching. It's going to be dry and chilly as we end up the week. The mornings are still going to be really cold in the morning. We'll be in the upper 20s and then on Friday morning we will be starting off around the freezing mark in the afternoons. We do warm up a little bit into those lower 50s for highs for Thursday mid 50s here for your Friday. We're watching this area of, of uh, low pressure that is developing in the Gulf of Mexico and depending on that exact track of that system, that's going to determine where the rain is going to be. And at this point, we do think we're going to see some showers moving in for the weekend. Saturday, the rain chances will be a little bit lower. Sunday's rain chances will be a little bit higher. So tomorrow we start off at 29. We get up to 50 degrees in the afternoon. We'll see mostly sunny skies and uh, that nine is on our scale from one to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day with that dry weather in place. Plenty of sunshine. The only reason it's not at 10 or 11 is just because those temperatures are going to be so cold. Uh, Friday, we're going to see some uh, OK weather. A few clouds build in during the day. It's on Saturday when we see some of those rain chances increase. Now this model going into Saturday, you'll notice here isn't really showing a lot of rain here. You can see a little bit of that coming up around uh, the lunchtime hour. Just a few scattered showers, but not torrential downpours and not raining all day. This is the Euro model that shows that low in the Gulf. And again, depending on where this is tracking, where the Euro is being a little more aggressive with this low, showing it moving more to the north. The Euro was giving us higher rain chances. The American model lower rain chances. So we're going to be fine tuning this forecast as we head into the weekend. Dry, chilly Thursday and Friday, Saturday up to 52 with the rain chances at about 30%, 60% chance for showers Sunday. Some of those showers linger into Monday and then just in time for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. We're going to be drier, but also uh, warm with high temperatures both days in the lower 60s. It's time for the AC in your one stop shop for all things entertainment in the state of Georgia. And a new woman is joining the cast of Sisters. That's Tyler Perry's new show following a group of single black females. Deadline reports Keena Ferguson is set for a recurring role on the show. Ferguson will play Leslie Davenport, a no nonsense, tough private investigator who's hired to investigate a love triangle involving one of the other women. Mm. All right, now, have you ever thought you were in love? 
or at least about to find love, but then you just never heard back from them. Well, then it's time to catch a casting. MTV is casting for season two of its show, Ghosted. Sharp Entertainment is casting people between 18 and 39 years old who have been ghosted or who have done the ghosting. All you have to do is send in photos and send a description of the ghosting. The details are all up on 11alive.com slash the A-Scene. For more of the A-Scene, make sure you visit our website, 11alive.com slash the A-Scene. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Use that hashtag, the A-Scene. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh, Jess, Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. okay. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. Well, you well, know, I even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hot spots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibes. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're gonna get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must see. It was an exciting night for the Marietta High School football team being paraded through town after winning its first state title since 1967. So exciting. 11 Alive's Jay Plyburn was in the middle of all of the excitement. It's a cold night here in Marietta, yet hundreds are gathered on the downtown square for a parade celebrating the Marietta High School football team who recently won the state championship. I spoke with the superintendent and the head football coach to get their take on all the excitement. This school, this city, it's, it goes hand in hand. I mean, everybody in the city supports it. The kids love it. Uh, the community environment is great. So I think it's, it's special for everybody uh, that's ever gone to Marietta. It's special. I thought the season, you know, we got better every week as it went on, and we played our best football in the playoffs. We peaked at the right time, and that's the secret. And uh, playoff football is you want to be playing your best, uh, minimize the turnovers, and everybody dialed in to what their job has to be, and we did that as a team. And um, I think that, combined with the character and integrity of our kids, pulled us through. It's been a magical season obviously for our team and equally as special for our community. Uh, it's been really special for me as superintendent to see so many people come out, support our team, encourage everyone associated with a Friday night. I'm extremely proud of, of, of all my guys and uh, my coaching staff. They really did a great job this year getting the kids ready and the
the kids did a great job of responding and, and taking to the coaching and putting it into action. I can tell you that this team has done a lot of special things on the field. They're incredible student leaders inside this school building, impressive GPAs and community activity. We're just so proud of what they represent, not just as a football team, but more importantly, as a Married Blue Devil. And this was the first time in more than 50 years the Blue Devils have won the state championship. Now they're headed to Las Vegas to play in a bowl game against Eastside Catholic. That game scheduled for 8 o'clock Pacific Standard Time this Friday. Back to you in the studio. And if you want to support the home team, there will be a watch party for that bowl game at Glover Park Brewery that is in Marietta. But keep in mind, it doesn't start until 11 o'clock local time on Friday night. We have cold weather again tonight and in the morning. We're down to 29 degrees and then up to 50 in the afternoon. A lot of sunshine. It's going to look nice. It's just going to be feeling chilly out there. And then a little milder Friday with a few more clouds around. We're up to 50, uh, 54 degrees. We have some showers on Saturday. Not raining all day, just scattered showers around. The higher rain chances on Sunday. That lingers into Monday before ending. And then just in time for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Drying out, but it's going to be kind of mild. The temperatures in the 60s. I like that. Yeah, not, yeah, not going to feel Christmassy, but we're going to create the vibe, right? That's yeah. right. That's right. Hey, prime time rolls <laughs> on at 10. Stick around. I'm 11 Lives, Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man. It's the heart of the South, and it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions, and who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once in Olympic City, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire yeah. week where you just have lost it. Like on, a, <laughs> on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go. Oh, away. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. Yeah. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekday, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyperlocal, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. A historic night on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C. as the House has, has voted to impeach the 45th President of the United States, 
President Donald J. Trump. This is the third time in America's history Congress voted to impeach a sitting president. And this follows a day-long emotional debate on the floor as to whether President Trump violated his oath of office in pressuring Ukraine to investigate a political opponent in Joe Biden. We have done what we have set out to do. The House has acted on a very sad day to protect and defend the Constitution of the United States, to do so in a manner that was fair, even though the other side was mischaracterizing it. Nonetheless, it was fair. While the House voted, President Trump spoke to supporters at a strong rally in Michigan where there was a lot of emotion, and not surprisingly, he took shots at the Democrats. You are the ones interfering in America's elections. You are the ones subverting America's democracy. We did nothing wrong, nothing whatsoever. This was just an excuse. Georgia representatives voted along party lines, all nine Georgia Republicans against both articles of impeachment tonight. And all five Georgia Democrats for both articles of impeachment. Some of them took to the House floor to voice their, to voice their outrage for or against forcefully. Here's John Sherrick. Months of anger and rancor and bare-fisted rhetoric in this political blood sport called presidential impeachment crystallized in the final hours prior to the vote in the House. Republican Doug Collins, certain President Trump will thrive regardless. I see coming off a president who will put his head down even through this sham impeachment and he will do his job. He will put the American people first. He will tell them that I care about you. He will still put the economy first and he will make sure this country stands strong. Madam Speaker. Democrat John Lewis calling for impeachment, calling this a sad day. When you see something that is not right, not just, not fair, you have a moral obligation to say something, to do something. For some, this vote may be hard, but we have a mission and a mandate to be on the right side of history. It was Republican Barry Loudermilk who made a biblical comparison. When Jesus was falsely accused of treason, Pontius Pilate gave Jesus the opportunity to face his accusers. During that sham trial, Pontius Pilate afforded more rights to Jesus than the Democrats have afforded this president in this process. Democrat Hank Johnson spoke of a president who was and is guilty. Because our president is, as we speak, abusing his power and placing himself above the law. He doesn't think he can win an election fair and square, so he's trying to cheat. And no matter how the Senate ends up voting. Those in favor say aye. aye. Georgia House members. Those opposed, nay. No. Putting their words and their votes. The ayes have it. On the record and into history. Well, there's no exact date when the Senate will start the impeachment trial, but it could be as early as the second week in January. Here's how the process will break down. A team of lawmakers from the House called managers play the role of prosecutors. Meanwhile, the president has defense lawyers of his own, and the Senate is the jury. When the trial is over, the Senate will vote. If fewer than two-thirds of the senators find the president not guilty, Trump remains in office. If two-thirds or more of them find him guilty, then President Trump is removed from office and Vice President Pence takes over as president. There is no appeal to this process. Stay with 11 Alive for the latest on the impeachment inquiry. You can follow it all by downloading the 11 Alive news app. The man accused of pretending to be a fake, phony, fraudulent police officer and trying to handcuff a masseuse now is in jail. Police have arrested Christopher Getter. They say he received a massage at Massage Angels in Roswell, and that's when he suddenly tried to cuff the masseuse and claimed to be a Roswell police officer. He then proceeded to perform what investigators called an indecent act. Gutter is now in the Fulton County Jail and is facing multiple charges. A second twin now is under arrest for allegedly attacking a woman with a frying pan. Kyra Faison was taken into custody at a motel in College Park. The Clayton County Sheriff says that she and her sister, Tyra, beat the victim in the face with a pan and stole her keys and phone. The sheriff says Kyra's boyfriend also involved in all of this, he was arrested. New tonight, after a series of online rumors about human trafficking go viral in the Metro, one local police department is trying to separate fact from fiction. Ryan Kruger joins us live with the story. Now, Ryan, police in Gwinnett County were blown away by the public interest in this topic. Yeah, that's right, Aisha. Gwinnett County Police announced last week they would be holding a town hall on human trafficking, and the event quickly filled up.
Across the country, warnings about white vans trying to abduct women and children off the streets and sell them into human trafficking. They're the stories of nightmares and movies, but they appear to be purely fiction. This isn't something where typically where people are just kidnapped off the side of the road and, and stuck into a, a, a role of servitude that, that sometimes movies or, or other avenues will make people think is, is a lot more frequently happening. Corporal Colin Flynn with Gwinnett County Police tells me the department hasn't had a single case of someone being kidnapped randomly and sold into trafficking. Instead, a lot of times the vulnerable adults in these cases or, or even teenagers are people that maybe get involved in drug activity uh, or prostitution and eventually get caught up in this lifestyle. Gwinnett County Police hosted dozens of community members Wednesday night at the department to learn more about the truth and myths of human trafficking. With the topic on many people's minds, there's a lot of misinformation. From complaints about white vans to people approaching customers at malls and grocery stores, many of those stories turning out to be false. But police do appreciate people being vigilant in trying to tackle this growing crime. To just call the police and we'd be happy to come out and check uh, just to make sure that everything is okay. And tonight's town hall was uh, so well attended, so popular that Gwinnett police tell me they plan to hold similar ones after the new year. Thank you, Ryan. Gainesville police have charged a woman with the murder of her four month old daughter. Police arrested Laquisha Jackson. She's accused of suffocating her child inside their apartment. Jackson is currently being held at the Hall County Detention Center. Right now, Brookhaven police are investigating a deadly shooting after a man catches a suspected burglar in his home. It is the second case of a Metro Atlanta homeowner fighting back in the last 24 hours. 11 Alive's Elvin Lopez now has the story from Brookhaven. Brookhaven police say they believe the homeowner came home around noon and saw a burglar ransacking the place here on Wilmont Drive and shot him. Police say they found the suspect dead inside the home and we know detectives and uh, crews have been out here processing the scene trying to determine exactly what happened and whether the suspect was armed when the homeowner shot him. Here's what Deputy Police Chief Brandon Gurley had to say. Georgia law allows us to use force up to and including deadly force to protect our lives, the lives of a third party, or to protect against property. Um, so uh, we are, we'll be looking at those things to find out if there's a self-defense claim involved here. Yeah, and police say it's too early into the investigation to speculate on whether the homeowner will be facing any charges in this case. And police at this point are not releasing the name of the suspect who was killed inside that home. Tonight, another homeowner is in the hospital recovering from surgery after getting into a gunfight with two men who kicked in her door. Caitlin Ross following the investigation, this time happening in Rockdale County. Neighbors tell us they're stunned this happened. It's a quiet community on Lost Valley Drive in Conyers, just down the street from a shopping center. And they say they don't see crime like this very often. They're surprised the suspects would have targeted a home that's so visible. It's right when you turn on the street there. You can see the crack in the homeowner's front door after the sheriff's office says the two men forced their way inside. The sheriff says the woman tried to run and hide in a bedroom, but the suspects kicked that door in too. Then a gunfight broke out between them. The victim was shot twice, and at last check, she was still in the hospital recovering from surgery. The sheriffs believe at least one of the suspects was also injured, and they're checking to see if a man who was found shot in DeKalb County may be connected to this break-in. At this point, the sheriff is still trying to figure out if the home was targeted for a specific reason or whether the suspects may have followed the victim home. It's also unclear if the suspects actually ended up taking anything from the home. New tonight, a drug bust leads to two alleged gang members arrested in Gwinnett County. Investigators believe Jorge Rosales and Damian Martinez are members of the street gang known as Serenos. GBI says during the bus, investigators seized several guns, about 10 pounds of meth, two pounds of weed, and some cocaine. I find the fields to be uh, fertile for hunting. Uh, we're not having any problem finding uh, criminal gangs. Uh, to focus on and to target with these investigations, so I expect similar results in the near future. Investigators say this is just the beginning and more arrests could be coming. A substitute teacher charged with slapping a student with special needs in the face. According to warrants, this man, Charles Black, was filling in at Hillgrove High School in Powder Springs earlier this month. And when a nonverbal student wouldn't stop touching a computer, Mr. Black allegedly slapped him in the face to get him to stop. 
The school district says Mr. Black no longer employed with them. And they are encouraging people to report safety concerns to the district's tip line. I'm meteorologist Chris Holcomb from the 11 Alive Storm Trackers, where we have dry air in place right now. But we're going to be watching a little bit of moisture, trying to build in from the Gulf of Mexico with an area of low pressure. I'll let you know if that's going to be enough moisture to increase our rain chances. Up next, federal agents join the search for a missing mother and her baby. We're hearing from her parents in Texas as they try to make sense of what may have happened to their daughter. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish. Oh, oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, uh, yeah. Right, right. About I mean, that. Reward would be... Slimming, Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, right? yeah, okay. yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, even too. more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Some mornings, what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast Mirror. The investigation into a missing Texas mother and her newborn baby is getting more intense. The FBI has now joined the search and Heidi Broussard's parents are speaking out. NBC Sam Brock has the update from the place where she was last seen, her home in Austin, Texas. The search is intensifying. FBI teams going door to door at the suburban apartment complex. I see kids like this on the, you know, on the news and but you never think it's going to be yours. And two puzzled parents, Tammy and David Broussard, trying to make sense of what's happened. Whoever it is that has her and knows anything, just please come forward. It's been six days now since their 33-year-old daughter Heidi and their three-week-old granddaughter Margot vanished without a trace. Heidi's car still in the parking lot near her apartment with a baby car seat inside. Something happened. She would not just leave. Oh, no, she wouldn't do she, that. Uh, her ideas. son, she'd never leave her son. Broussard also has a six-year-old son. She dropped him off at school last week, shortly before disappearing. Our assumption is that they're alive, and uh, the sooner that we can find them, the better. Investigators have ramped up search efforts, but say they have no person of interest. They're also not sure if the disappearance is nefarious or if the mother left of her own accord. She wouldn't leave. Not without an ID. All of her cash was in her purse. Her whole purse is here. Broussard's boyfriend fighting back tears as he talked about his suddenly empty apartment and the baffling circumstances surrounding his girlfriend and daughter. More drivers are suing Uber, saying that they're employees, that they are not contractors. More than 30 current and former drivers filed a lawsuit in San Francisco saying that they should have been considered employees since at least 2018. Back then, the California Supreme Court set criteria for deciding if a worker is an employee or a contractor. But Uber says its business model does not run afoul of that ruling. Recently, it has started offering improved benefits like sick leave and adding a minimum earnings standard as well. Women are going to have to wait to get equal pay roughly 250 years. That's grim. That's troubling. That's according to a new report. The World Economic Forum estimates the pay gap won't fully close until the year 2277. The group's global gender pay gap report tracks the gender gap across economics, politics, education, and health. 
When looking at how close the United States is to closing the gap, we fell two spots to number 53 on that list. All right, temperatures continue to drop, Chris. We're moving into the overnight hours. You're still tracking more cold weather for us hour by hour. Yeah, it is going to be cold out there. In fact, if you were cold this morning, we, we made it down to 31. That was our low temperature this morning. In fact, you can see this when we go back and look at around 8 o'clock this morning. That's when we hit that low just below freezing at 31. And then during the day, those temperatures were kind of slow to rise. We made it up to 48 in between these hourlies of 47. We did hit 48 briefly for our high temperature. And now this evening, We've seen those temperatures dropping through those 30s again, and it's going to be even colder in the morning than it was out there this morning. I think we'll drop down to around 29 degrees for a low temperature early in the morning. Right now we're at 37. We do have some areas that are below freezing right now in Peachtree City. It's 31. Carrollton is below freezing at 30. Blairsville is 31. And then we've got uh, these other temperatures that are in the low to mid 30s, a couple up, upper 30s around as well. So here in town, we're at 37 now. We're going to be in the mid 30s at midnight, right at 35 degrees. And then we'll be at freezing at about 4 in the morning. <coughs> Excuse me. And then right around 30 degrees between 6 and 8. I do think between these hourlies, we'll dip down to 29 for our low temperature and then get up to 36 in the app in the uh, around the 10 o'clock hour. It's going to be slow to warm, but it might be just a couple of degrees warmer tomorrow than it was today. Today was 48. I think we'll hit 50 tomorrow. That's after that chilly morning low of 29, mostly sunny skies. So on our scale from 1 to 11, where at 11 is a perfect day, we're going to go with a 9 on the wasometer. I'm skipping ahead to Friday because nothing's really showing up on the forecast track for tomorrow. So let's go ahead to Friday where we do have a few more clouds that will be moving in, but we don't expect any rain here on Friday. And we're watching these models updating a little bit more. They're having a hard time figuring out exactly what's going to happen with this area of low pressure that's in the Gulf of Mexico. So for now, we're calling for not a washout on Saturday, but a few scattered showers are going to start moving in here during the day on Saturday. This is at noon. Doesn't rain all day. We're just talking about some scattered showers with more of the rain down to the south of us. Now, here's another look at what we're watching. This is the European model, and this one is being a little more aggressive with this area of low pressure and how much rain is going to develop around it and how much rain it's going to send up into our area. Watch the track of this low as it moves up to around the Florida Panhandle. You can see those showers moving in here for later Saturday. Then a better coverage of rain on Sunday. Now the models are still differing. The GFS has the low pressure system more down to the south and that's keeping the higher rain chances to the south and it's not really showing a lot of rain for us. With the European model, the ones that's a little more reliable is showing that more of that moisture coming in here for Sunday and even lingering into Monday as well before it all pulls out. All the models though are agreeing that it looks like we're going to be dry as we head into Christmas Eve and also on Christmas Day. So here is that forecast as you can see us progressing there onto Christmas uh, 43 for a low on Christmas Eve with an afternoon high of 63. Those temperatures trending above average by about 10 degrees above where we should be for this time of year. And then on Christmas Day, 44 for a low with a high of 62. It's going to be dry. We don't expect any kind of moisture around and temperatures milder than average. If you're hoping for a white Christmas, eh, it's not going to happen this year. 50 degrees for a high Thursday, 54 on Friday with dry weather. Then on Saturday, again, not a washout. We're just talking about a few scattered showers that will be developing, especially later in the day. And then that higher rain chance on Sunday and then uh, Monday, the rain moving out and dry for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day with those mild temperatures in place, lows in the 40s in the mornings and then afternoon highs in the low 60s. Some folks may even make it into the mid 60s on Christmas Day. Have you ever thought you were falling in love then just never heard from them again? MTV wants to share your story. I have the details in the A scene. You can assume Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A-Scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, I sent my drafts. That's my bad. So 
you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Stop. I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Uh, yeah. Right, right. I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming down. Okay, yes. yeah, right? yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And, and beautiful skin. Well, you know, well, even more beautiful skin, you know, when it's all <laughs> hydrated and everything else. I'm not going to be able to sit next to you in a few months. <laughs> Don't drink your morning coffee alone. Have it with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Some mornings what you want isn't what you have time for. And that's why there's the Rush Block, the biggest news of the day in five minutes or less. Quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the Rush Block on the Morning Rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your Morning Rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by... Time for the AC in your one stop shop for all things entertainment in the state of Georgia. And a new woman is joining the cast of Sisters. That's Tyler Perry's new show. Following a group of single black females, Deadline reports Keena Ferguson is set for a recurring role on the show. Ferguson will play Leslie Davenport, a no nonsense, tough private investigator who's hired to investigate a love triangle involving one of the other women. Mm. All right, now, have you ever thought you were in love or at least about to find love? but then you just never heard back from them. Well, then it's time to catch a casting. MTV is casting for season two of its show Ghosted. Sharp Entertainment is casting people between 18 and 39 years old who have been ghosted or who have done the ghosting. All you have to do is send in photos and send a description of the ghosting. The details are all up on 11alive.com slash the A-Scene. For more of the A-Scene, make sure you visit our website, 11alive.com slash the A-Scene. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Use that hashtag, the A-Scene. For 40 years, MARTA employees have come together to help local kids. They raise money and plan events to make sure children in Metro Atlanta get support. Today is one of their favorite days of the year. They filled the MARTA headquarters with gifts, hundreds of bikes, and just about anything you could think of. These gifts make Christmas possible for more than 3,000 kids in Metro Atlanta. Their parents got to come and pick out their presents. Shaquandra Harris says what Marta gave her today will be the only items under the tree for her four and six year olds. So this really meant a lot for her. A control car. We have this for my son. I was by coming here and getting, you know, toys and stuff that they like. So I was excited. So there will be more bikes on the MARTA trains headed to uh, people's homes, and we're excited about that. MARTA employees have a charity club that raised $600,000. It puts on events all year, but today's gift giveaway is by far the biggest. Nice job by the employees doing that. Awesome, awesome. All right, guys, it's time for me to head out to get ready for Up Late coming up at 11 on 11 Alive. So if you are up late, come on and join us. All right, Aisha, thank you. We appreciate it. We'll see you over in 11 Alive in about 36 minutes. Here's what's coming up on the ATL. We've heard a lot of warnings recently, but are they actually stopping teenagers from vaping? A new study shows some troubling numbers. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. What's the best part about Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together, our voices grow. Together we come alive, amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. 
Together, we are unstoppable. Together, we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows? Hey, and they cliffhangers. Would, you know, they yeah. didn't wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the $6 million man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost 6 million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Live's Chesley McNeil. I'm gonna give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere. From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us, use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from five to seven on the Morning Rush on 11 Alive. newscast not enough for you get even more at 11 alive's youtube channel where you'll find uncut interviews extended body cam footage live streams of atlanta's biggest trials and more subscribe to 11 alive today babe where are my keys uh, where's my lunch where's my phone hey where's my blue shirt where's my pen have you seen it Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire... It is one of the fastest growing populations in the state, but remains one of the most undercounted communities. That's why nonprofits in the area are teaming up to reach the Asian American community about the 2020 census. 11 Alive's Shanu Her explains why these groups are now involved. Well, the census cards go out this March, and these nonprofits say the data from the census helps with many initiatives that will last for the next decade, involving millions of dollars in government funding. We've been around for about 40 years now. It's work Victoria Wynn's passionate about, helping amplify Asian American voices in Atlanta. We have such a, um, a thriving Asian American community here in the South that people don't often recognize. To help reflect that, the Center for Pan-Asian Community Services is pushing awareness of the 2020 census with its APPI Complete Count Committee aimed at the diverse Asian population. In 2010 and just watching what happened after 2000 Census Bureau, we know that there were a lot of gaps, maybe a lot of resources that didn't land in our communities. Their partners at Asian Americans Advancing Justice Atlanta say those resources and funding are critical. The 2010 census showed at least 30 percent growth in the Asian American population in nearly every state. In Georgia, it grew by 83 percent. She says since then, it's continued to grow and spread beyond Metro Atlanta. 2020 is a really important time to capture that information, especially as those cities continue to like grow and plan for that growth. And planning starts with making sure people know the difference they can make through the census. Our job is to share that with our communities. Now, because these organizations say the Asian population itself is so diverse in Georgia, the website can be accessed through nearly 20 different languages. They have partnered with groups across the state to get the word out about the census. Finding your voice as a teenager is never easy, but it can change the course of a future. But as Natisha Lance tells us, with that, the right teacher and the right voice can help young people get to an Ivy League school.
what might he mean when he says giving to Caesar what is he? Establishing a legacy of greatness can take time unless Brandon Fleming is at the helm. He teaches us about arguing values instead of facts, and that actually helps us to win our debates. Two years ago, he created a pipeline for African-American students from Atlanta to Harvard through debate. There is no moral form of leadership. It really depends a lot more on the followers. Fleming's debate team, made up of 30 students from all over the metro, has won the Harvard Debate Council's tournament both years. They even made history as the first black team to ever do it. It's surreal. It is surreal for a man who didn't always excel in school. I hated teachers. I hated teachers. I hated school. The, the only reason why I even wanted to go to college was to play basketball. Basketball carried him to college until a career-ending knee injury forced him to drop out. He found work at a vitamin factory. It was the most painful experience of my life. Um, in fact, it, it was so challenging for me that I, I sunk into a spell of depression um, and I actually tried to kill myself. From those dark moments, he found inspiration to return to school. Um, what seemed like a moment of pain um, was actually the birthing of my passion. Through a movie, The Great Debaters. The debate is blood sport. You must destroy your opponent. Not only that movie ignited a flame within me. And what I hope to do for my, for my students is the same thing. I've never had a teacher who I felt has truly cared about me the way that Mr. Fleming does. That care landed him on Forbes 30 under 30 list. Affirmation is important and, and affirmation is great. But at the end of the day, that's not what we do it for. You know, um, it, these moments give me an opportunity to pause and reflect upon the journey. The success of Atlanta's program could lead to similar ones in other states. Fleming has accomplished a lot in just 10 years, but he says he is uh, nothing compared to what his kids will be. For the first time, we are hearing from the first responders who rescued two young children in Florida who were lost in the woods for two days, 48 hours. And it's one of three things you need to know on this Wednesday night. Officers Blake Ortegas and Josh Montoro were the ones who found the six-year-old boy and his five-year-old sister inside what looked like a doghouse in the woods. The children had wandered away while playing in their yard. They ended up in the woods about six blocks away from their home. According to Montoro, the children were hungry and they wanted cheese pizza. And like a lot of kids, despite the scary situation, they still were thinking about Christmas. She talked to me about Christmas and that she wanted a big green teddy bear and a tablet. And I, I told her we'll make sure that happens for her. And I just told her how amazing she was. And well, these children are very lucky. They were okay. They were taken to a hospital, and they are now getting ready for Christmas. We've been flooded with warnings recently about the dangers of vaping THC. A new study says teenagers are vaping nicotine and marijuana at higher rates than prior. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez has the details. The new study out this morning reveals the number of teenagers vaping marijuana rose dramatically in the past year, with a percentage among high school seniors nearly doubling, jumping from 7.5% to 14%. That's according to the National Institute on Drug Abuse. The survey, which relies on self-reported data from more than 42,000 teenagers, even found that 3.5% of 12th graders and 3% of 10th graders are vaping marijuana nearly every single day. Alarming numbers as public health officials report 2,400 hospitalizations and 52 deaths linked to vaping lung illnesses. Many of those cases tied to inhaling THC, the high inducing ingredient in marijuana. The study also found the number of teens vaping nicotine every day shot up to 12%, and more than a third of 12th graders have used e cigarettes at least once in the past year. Many teens who never smoke cigarettes have made vaping a habit, like 15 year old Luca Kennard. I noticed I was like, this is getting out of control. As vaping increases, the use of other drugs has declined. Alcohol use and cigarette smoking are both down, and the abuse of prescription opioids is at its lowest level. New stats suggesting that vaping marijuana is a new vice of choice among America's teenagers. It's been five years since Chanel Anderson drowned on the line with 911, trapped in her SUV as it sank in a Cherokee County pond. 
The Reveal's chief investigator, Brendan Keefe, shows us dramatic improvements to 911 that Chanel is still inspiring. Chanel Anderson was trapped in her sinking SUV, her last breaths wasted trying to help 911 find this Cherokee County pond. Give me the address one more time. It's not working. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 19 minutes passed before the first rescuers arrived too late to save her life. Ma'am, I lost her. Change has been affected 100% solely because of her. Carl Hall is the chief of Alpharetta 911, the center that answered Chanel's call. Okay, are you before Windward or after Windward? Five years later, this is the first next generation 911 center in the state of Georgia. What does next generation 911 mean? 911 was at the speed of dial up. Now 911 is at the speed of light because it's all transferred via fiber. And that means dispatchers have far more confidence when a 911 caller is plotted on their maps. Also, emergency calls are finally routed by the phone's location, not the cell tower address. If someone calls 911 right here, right now, where we're sitting in Alpharetta, they're going to be routed to this center based on where they are, not on their tower now, right? That's correct. When we began investigating 911 five years ago, we went looking for the state agency we could hold accountable. There wasn't one. There's a Georgia Emergency Communications Authority. That didn't exist before this. Did not exist, had not even been thought of, I don't believe. Now the new state agency distributes more than $200 million a year to local 911 centers. And Georgia qualified for $4 million in federal grant money to transform the state to next generation 911. What do you wish for is to never have to transfer a 911 phone call, that it goes to the right spot the first time. That's what our callers deserve. So this change is going to save lives, but this is just Alpharetta for now. When can we expect all cities in Georgia to get this kind of an upgrade? Cheryl, it will take years to move the whole state to that next generation 911 system. In the meantime, the Georgia Emergency Communications Authority, they're consolidating all those city and county proprietary maps. So callers who reach the wrong 911 center will never again be off the grid like Chanel was five years ago. All right, important changes. Brendan, I know you've got a lot more coming up at 11. So we'll see you up late at 11. A historic night has the House votes on impeaching President Trump. The president, meanwhile, is in Michigan, where he continues to denounce the impeachment as a sham, a hoax, a witch hunt. Joining me right now is Ron Hart, our syndicated columnist in residence. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. You know, we talk a lot about history in the context of these impeachment hearings, but yeah. it doesn't feel like it. It <laughs> feels so partisan it yeah. feels like just a prelude to what's going to be a very raucous 2020 election cycle yeah the democrats are really afraid there's going to be meddling in the uh, 2020 election by the american voter <laughs> they have to get him out before that happens you know they can't leave this impeachment thing it's harder for you know democrats to leave impeachment than it is to leave scientology i mean they're, they're, they're just having a hard time letting this thing go so yeah, that's the real story this is completely partisan it should be an embarrassment i think ben franklin told us when he gave us our country he says it's a republic if you can hold on to it this will test that this is not the way it's supposed to be I like any good Ben Franklin reference. We don't hear a lot of those on this television station anymore. He's good. He was one of the best. He was one of the best. 2019 is now on its way uh, yeah. out the door. New Year comes and an election season that is going to be something to behold, I think, in the snow of New Hampshire and Iowa. It'll be fun. I think, uh, you know, you have some pretty good Democrat candidates. You have a lot of them. There's 25 that filed to run for office, you know. Um, and it, it takes about two minutes to fill out the form, which explains a lot why we have the feel we have. Christmas feel different to you as you get older, or are we looking at it in the context that, you know, America is a little more rough and tumble, and we're not quite as melancholy as we once were, and Christmas takes on a different yeah. a, a different viewpoint. Am I being a uh, bah humbug here? No. I well, walked into Houston's the other day. I see this family sitting there quietly praying that the heads, heads are down, five of them like that. And I said, isn't that nice? They're kind of praying before their meal. And I found out they're all on their cell phone. <laughs> so, it's a little different world than yours and mine. It, it is different, but Christmas is such a, a great time to sort of take inventory of family and friends yeah. and good health and all of the things that oftentimes we're too busy to acknowledge. Yeah, that in the new year. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure around Christmas, way too material, too Madison Avenue for me. It feels like if you don't buy a family member a Lexus with a bow on it, you've kind of 
fallen short. You Can know, I tell you how much I loathe, despise, <laughs> that commercial. hate that? I'm, I'm sorry to be a hater, but yeah. I, I hate that commercial. Yeah. I think it sends such a negative vibe out to the country about yeah. materialism. Yeah, I hate that commercial. And whoever wrote the Cars for Kids jingle, that bugs me. Uh, one eight hundred. Yes, <laughs> I, I, I know that one. Very I, know, well. I feel like strangling the radio when I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a good charity though. Apparently, yeah, apparently so. Bad jingle. Bad jingle. Ron Hart, Merry Christmas. You too. Have All a right. good one. Thanks. Thanks. You too. Cold air out there right now, and it's going to get colder tonight. Stay with us. We'll tell you about when we'll warm up and if we'll see rain heading into the weekend. It was an exciting early signing day for Georgia and Georgia Tech. Who are the big flips and where do the top local players in the state sign? We'll have our recruiting roundup coming up next. Less quick and convenient for all those hectic mornings. Catch the rush block on the morning rush. Everybody has learned how to drive, so I'm going to go ahead and retire. <laughs> It didn't last long. Crank up your morning rush with Crash Clark. Weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. Atlanta is filled with great photo spots. And of course, I would know because this is my hometown. I'm 11 Alive's Francesca Amaker, and I'm about to show you my picks for the three best Instagram spots in Atlanta. The Outcast mural is one of Atlanta's newest hotspots. Created by the artist Jex, people flock from all over the world just to get a shot of these two hip hop legends. News of the mural went viral when Big Boy himself gave a shout out on Instagram. You can find it tucked away in a back parking lot in Little Five Points. An Atlanta icon, ever-changing, always interesting. The Crog Street Tunnel is full of artwork from some pristy, eclectic Atlanta artists. You always feel as good vibe. When you vibe with it, it's a good time. We don't worry about the hate, we just pass it to the side. There's graffiti, community messages, concert announcements. You really never know what you're going to get here, and that's what makes it so special. You can find it between Cabbage Town and Inman Park. If you've never checked it out, it's a must-see. There are hundreds of works of art along the Beltline. I'm talking murals, sculptures, photography. This beautiful mural was created by the artist Hintz. It's 100 feet long, and even though it was created in 2014, it still remains very popular to musicians and photographers alike. You can find it on the East Side Trail under Virginia Avenue. So let me know what you think. It doesn't have to be street art. Maybe your favorite spot is down the street from your home or a great view. Connect with me on Facebook and Instagram and share your favorite Instagram spots in Atlanta. And come hang out with me on Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Televised newscast not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. I haven't seen you in a while. Where you been? It looks like fun. It they does. are fun. <laughs> they're and they're convenient. Yeah. But they're being dumped everywhere. 5,000 scooters at one time active throughout the city. I enjoy them myself. They're fun. Yeah. There's got to be some regulations. That's I just feel the like thing. they have to evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a yeah. new way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. She is Metro Atlanta's Christmas gift to the world. The one and only Brenda Lee is the remarkable performer behind rocking around the Christmas tree. But did you know she got her start right here in Atlanta? She is a Grady baby in 1944. We're taking a look back in our Where We Live series where we explore some of the little known past behind some of the, the city's most iconic narratives. Rocking around the Christmas tree at the Christmas party. 
Brenda Lee's distinctive, powerful voice took her from Southern poverty to the top of American music. Her landmark career began on Atlanta television and radio, and by the 1960s, she was a top-charting solo female vocalist singing rockabilly, pop, and country music. She had 47 U.S. chart hits during the 1960s, surpassed only by Elvis Presley, the Beatles, and Ray Charles. But it was a song by Johnny Marks in 1958 that would make Lee's name synonymous with holiday cheer. She was only 14 at the time. Speaking by phone last week from her Nashville home, she told me she immediately loved the song the first time she had heard it in the office of the legendary Owen Bradley. He had assembled a team of greats to record it with her. It was released as a single that November, but only sold about 5,000 copies, and it didn't do much better the following year in 1959. But it gained traction in subsequent years, eventually selling millions of copies in the 1960s. But she says what really catapulted the song was a famous scene in the movie Home Alone, decades later. Well, we had chilly air out there today. Started off this morning with temperatures one degree below freezing down to 31. We should be around 36 for this time of year in those morning hours. So we were about five degrees below average to start the day. And then our high this afternoon was only 48. And that was also five degrees below average. We should be around 53 for this time of year. Uh, we didn't have any rain around today. It was nice and dry, plenty of sunshine. But you know, we're ending up the year and watching this deficit and it's holding right now at about six and a half inches below where we should be in rainfall for the year. And we are going to see some showers coming in for the weekend and additional rain chances before the uh, the year ends. But I don't think we're going to going to make up that deficit at all. We will end the year with a rainfall deficit right now. We're at 37 degrees. Look at Carrollton. You're not only below freezing right now, but your temperature is in the 20s at 28. LaGrange is also in the 20s at 29 degrees. We're below freezing in Peachtree City. We have below freezing temperatures also in Blairsville, and we're just at freezing at this hour in Covington. So a wide range of temperatures. All of us are cold. We have a little bit of a breeze. But it's not particularly blustery. The highest wind that we see out there right now is a 10 mile an hour wind up in Gainesville. So that makes the temperatures feel just a little bit cooler. It feels like it's 30 in Atlanta. Here's that wind chill in Gainesville with that wind at about 10 miles an hour. It feels like it's 28 there. Blairsville's wind chill is 25. Dalton's wind chill is 29. Actual air temperatures here in town by tomorrow morning will move down to around 29 degrees. Then we'll get up to 50 in the afternoon. So colder in the morning than it was today, but in the afternoon tomorrow, it'll be a couple of degrees warmer than it was today. So on our scale from 1 to 11, where an 11 is a perfect day, we're going with a 9 on the wasometer. Now our uh, forecast track for tomorrow looks kind of boring, so we're going to skip that and start on Friday, where we see just a few clouds that'll be around in our area. But we don't expect any rain here on your Friday. As we go through the day, you just see a few of those additional clouds that'll be building in. It's on Saturday when we're going to be watching this area of low pressure down in the Gulf of Mexico that's going to start moving more to the north, and that's going to start spreading a little moisture our way. I'm thinking we'll start off dry on Saturday early, and then by lunchtime, a few showers pushing in from the south, and it's not going to be widespread. It's not going to last all day. We're just talking about a few scattered showers during the day here on Saturday. Here's a better look at that low. This is just one model scenario. The Euro is showing a little better chance for rain with that low coming more to the north. So you see some of those showers pushing in here on Saturday. They're with us on Sunday, and then they'll be with us even into early Monday too before that low pulls on out. The GFS model, the American model, keeps everything more to the south and lower rain chances. So just know the models aren't showing consistency right now, so we'll be fine-tuning this forecast. It, it will be dry Thursday and Friday, a few scattered showers Saturday. Best rain chances on Sunday, ending on Monday, and then just in time for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, it'll dry out, but also it's going to be on the warmer side with high temperatures in the lower 60s. All right, sports time. Here we go. It is day one of early signing, and it's in the books. Here is where UGA ranks nationally. That's according to Rivals.com, where they were able to stay in the top five. They still have a few more commits that they would like to sign by February. And Georgia Tech, they were able to move up into the top 25. So that's some good news for both schools. There was a lot of drama leading up to signing day for Georgia. They were not sure how Coach... Sam Pittman leaving for Arkansas would impact their offensive line recruits. Kirby Smart hired former Ole Miss coach Matt Luke, and he was able to lock down 
Four linemen today. Kirby Smart could not be more thrilled with his new hire. Here goes. To do what he's done in the short amount of time he's done, it was pretty remarkable um, because it was, a, it was a tough timing situation. And, you know, so happy for Sam and Jamie, the opportunity they've gotten. But uh, he's come in, Matt's come in, and, and put the, put the, put the Band-Aid on the bleeding and done a tremendous job and uh, turned those, those three guys around pretty quick. One of the linemen that Matt Luke was able to lock down, Darlington's Tate Ratledge, a talented five-star tackle. He signed with the Dogs today, but as Alex Glaze tells us, it almost might have been a disaster. Go Hawks! Yes, <laughs> When Sam Pittman left Athens for Arkansas, UGA lost one of its best recruiters. And with signing day just days away, Kirby Smart had to act quickly to make sure he didn't lose his top recruits. It was a real big shock. I was really doubting it at that time. I'm not sure what I was going to do because, of course, me and him had a great relationship. He's been recruiting me for almost four years now. Kirby replaced Pittman with former Old Miss head coach Matt Luke. Almost immediately, the two traveled to Darlington School to make sure four-star offensive lineman Tate Ratledge knew that he was a priority. Showing me that I was important to them and uh, it really helped. It meant a lot to Ratledge. It was easy. I grew up a Tennessee fan, so not going there. My dad was. My dad told me when I first started getting recruited, he's like, make your own decision. I've already got my scrapbook. So this is a decision where I feel like me and my family will be happiest. And even in the final hours before State, the top offensive lineman, and he wasn't the only top local recruit, Athens Academy's Leneth Whitehead announced his decision today committing to Tennessee. He is a talented player out of Athens. And the top uncommitted athlete in Georgia today, outside linebacker Philip Webb, out of Lanier is going to LSU at Ozeron, doing a, a terrific job of recruiting in Georgia this year. All right, now to the flats. Georgia Tech head coach Jeff Collins had one of the biggest flips of the day. He flipped four-star quarterback Jeff Sims from FSU to the Yellow Jackets. Sims decommitted earlier in the weekend. His decision came down to the wire. It's a great opportunity, and the coaches are real junior, and it's just, it just felt right. When did you know? Yesterday, <laughs> yeah, yesterday I knew. Yesterday, um, it was a close battle between Maryland and Georgia Tech, but Georgia Tech felt right in my heart. All right, we look forward to watching him in the years ahead here in Atlanta. That is it for sports. We'll take a break. Chris will close it out. Coming up next. Evolve with the times, though. They're not mm -hmm. going anywhere. They shouldn't go anywhere. It's a new yeah. way of transporting. Yeah. We have to evolve. I'm going to be looking for you next time, so use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m. You see them all day, every day. Headlines, stats, and numbers, but without context, they're just clickbait. So let's add some perspective. The three most interesting numbers of the day, what they mean, and why they're important. News and numbers on Uplink. Your voice, it is never too loud or too much. Your voice has the power to tell it like it is. Bringing us together to act. Together our voices grow. Together we come alive. Amplifying voices and breaking down barriers to change the story and shape the future. Together we are unstoppable. Together we are where Atlanta speaks. Remember the old days, the old cliffhangers when we used to watch shows hey, and they would, hangers. you know, they would ah. wait the next week. You're, oh, what's going to happen to the six million dollar man? He was hanging with his one bionic arm. Morning Rush, weekdays 5 to 7 a.m. Only on 11 Alive. Atlanta, almost six million people call the Metro home. But what makes this place so great? I'm 11 Alive's Chesley McNeil. I'm going to give you three reasons why Atlanta is the best city in America. Come on, man, it's the heart of the South. And it's one of the most diverse cities around. People from all walks of life have come here and made it home from different backgrounds, languages, and religions. And who can forget about the food? They all make this a cultural melting pot full of great people and Southern hospitality. Atlanta's rich history is unmatched, known as the cradle of the civil rights movement for good reason. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Andrew Young, John Lewis, they all fought in the struggle for equal rights right here. Businesses on Sweet Auburn Avenue, local black churches, and college students from Atlanta all helped shape the future of America. Once an Olympic city, Atlanta's home to the best sports scene across the nation. Hey look, the South has something to say. You won't find more passionate fans anywhere.
From the Atlanta Braves home run king, my man, Hank Aaron, to the human highlight film, Hawks' Dominique Wilkins, some of the greatest athletes have come through Atlanta. We're talking the Falcons, the Braves, the Hawks, the MLS champs, Atlanta United. This city has something for every kind of sports fan. So what do you think? Is Atlanta the best city in America? Connect with us. Use Facebook or Instagram and tell us why this city's got it going on. And then watch us every weekday morning from 5 to 7 on The Morning Rush on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. Babe, where are my keys? Uh, where's my lunch? Where's my phone? Hey, where's my blue shirt? It's cold out there right now. It'll be cold in the morning down to 29 and then 50s Thursday and Friday afternoon. Watching some showers move in Saturday scattered stuff. Better chance for rain Sunday ending Monday and then right now it looks dry and mild for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. No white Christmas. No white Christmas this year. No complaints. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow. 7 a.m. on 11 Alive. Traffic brought to you by John Foy and Associates. I woke up at 2 in the morning to be here. Where were you? Once you allow it, right, then it sets you up for the entire week where you just have lost it. Like on a, on a Sunday, it's like, oh, let's just order some Chinese food. And of course, you wind up eating tons of that. And then on Monday, you're like, well, I got leftovers. I can't let it go to waste. Auntie wants to give you a plate to take home from the barbecue. Uh, auntie. No. <laughs> auntie, don't invite me to the barbecue. I'm going to be looking for you next time. So use the hashtag and let us know you're hanging out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. The 11 Alive app is your go-to source for all things Atlanta. You hear what happened today? I'll tell you all about it. Breaking news the moment it happens. The Boyle Water Advisory. Hyper-local, accurate weather alert. You may want to grab that sweater, maybe even a coat. More stories to uncover. More videos to discover. He did it his way. Personalized for you. And that's what makes it so special. The 11 Alive app. Available now in the App Store. Hey, I got the ways to go. I got moves to make. Call me, but I stay in the flow. So you just do what I say. I'm no, 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 Oh, and so I was saying, there is always something filming here in Atlanta. From movies to TV shows, you name it. And so the A scene keeps up with all of it for you. Casting calls, which big celebrities are in town, what's filming, and if it's in your neighborhood. It's like an inside scoop. Oh, nice. But you know, I really wish you would have told us we were filming this. Today, Ooh, did I not text you? All right. Ah, it's in my drafts. That's my bad. So you slept in and you missed morning rush, huh? Well, here's what you missed. In my experience, good guys do finish last. Mm. Oh, I, I consider nice myself guy. a nice guy. Yeah, I've like got the most beautiful woman in the world in my eyes. You're a nice guy too, yeah. Jess. I'm saying in my experience, when growing up, good guys didn't oh, finish last. Oh. Somebody <laughs> broke his heart somewhere along the line. We're here every weekday morning, so come on, hang out with us. Morning Rush, weekdays, 5 to 7 a.m., only on 11 Alive. Televised newscast, not enough for you? Get even more at 11 Alive's YouTube channel, where you'll find uncut interviews, extended body cam footage, live streams of Atlanta's biggest trials, and more. Subscribe to 11 Alive today. You didn't get my text? The whole crew got together for coffee this morning. I'm, I'm learning the taste of water, because I'm, I'm sugary. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. okay. right, right. about I mean, that. Well, reward would be... Slimming. Slimming down. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. A little water yes. in my cup. And and beautiful skin. <laughs> well, 